Pittsburgh, but Trump, so many young teams have come in here and have been intimidated. And the Colts are young, too. They average 1.9 years NFL experience. And Don, playing in this stadium against the Cowboys, this is it. This is the most televised franchise there is in the NFL. This team is supported from Alaska to Alabama. And it's tough for these guys who two years ago were sitting in their college dorms or fraternity houses watching the Dallas Cowboys play in Texas Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Cowboys also had a dramatic come from behind win. They feel it's turned their season around, but Trump, do you feel that one win like that, a come from behind win as they had over New Orleans, can turn a struggling season around and make them a contender? It can. Today they start Danny White. They started Hogaboom at the beginning of this season to try to give them a spark. They're looking for a spark. This is a team that's had problems in the offensive line, but that win last week, the points they scored in the fourth quarter, it can ignite them. Well, Tony Dorsett said it brought us together as a team. We're ready to roll now. We'll find out. Frank Gush last night, Don, told us that his is a team of repetition. There's no pretenses about this football team. What they do best is run it, and that's exactly what they plan on doing today. Another vital aspect of the Cush teams are well-conditioned as our coach Landry's. Tom Landry says he feels better about his Dallas team now than he has all season. Coach Landry was so excited after that win over New Orleans last Sunday night. Monday came to practice, locked his keys in the car with the motor running. <laughs> Downfield, the kickoff. Rumbled by an upback, and now Dallas runs it back, and coming down here with the ball for the Cowboys is number 89, Brian Salonen. So a low kickoff by Biasucci, and we look at the Cowboys coming out on offense. Danny White is at quarterback. Tony Dorsett has not rushed for over 100 yards in 11 games. Ron Springs, a good pass catcher with him. Cowboys are buoyed by the return of Tony Hill. He's caught 16 passes in two weeks after missing five games. Dallas has not run the ball well this season. Offensive line has some good people, but they've been moved around because of injuries. Some players out of position. Dallas comes out first and ten. Indianapolis, they get in on defense with a very young, aggressive defense that plays as hard at the end of the game as they do in the opening series. Very well-conditioned team. Quick out. With the ball is Tony Hill, and with them are blockers, and Tony Hill's ahead for a first down for the Cowboys. 13-yard gain. As we look at the Colts' defensive front, Donnell Thompson's the best of pass rushers from North Carolina. Wisniewski a good. No tackle out of Penn State. Linebackers could be the strength of this defense. Cook, Sodom, Krause, and the blitzer Vernon Maxwell. Secondary a little shaky. Some people are hurt. Rookie starts at left corner. Preston Davis, free agent from Baylor. And that's an area that Danny White and the Cowboys will be going after the Indianapolis secondary. Tony Hill playing well off him was Preston Davis. He stuck him, but they got more yards. Rookie free agent Preston Davis going to get a lot of business here, it, it appears. Danny White throws two passes both to uh, Tony Hill. Uh, these are not complex patterns. They're just simply to establish, try to get Davis a little farther up the field on Hill than I would expect they throw it behind him. Tony Hill. Great one from Stanford, went out in the first game with a shoulder injury, missed five games, but he's been right back in four in the last two times out, as we see he is again today with two catches, two throws from Danny White, makes it now second down and eight. Second down and two. Give to Dorsett, and the stutter step, and Dorsett is going to hit close to a first down, needed to get to the Dallas 48-yard line. Johnny Cook's knocking down. Don, in talking to the Dallas coaches, they feel that their lack of success throwing the ball has kept linebackers at the line of scrimmage, and that's kept the Dallas Cowboys from that very good running game that historically they've had. Uh, Dorsett's not run the ball poorly. He's had around 75, 80, 90 yards a game, but he hasn't really broken that long run, and that's because of the lack of the passing game. Dorsett is actually Trump on target for a 1,200-yard season, even yes. though he hasn't been over 100. Cowboys moving well, though, with that diverse offense. They now have the first down. They're second in this drive. No score over early in the first quarter. Cosby, the tight end in motion. The pitch back. The touchdown, Tony, and Dorsett crosses midfield and goes out of bounds at about the 49-yard line of Indianapolis, where the Colts safety, strong safety, Mark Kofensis knocked him down. Dorsett, like Walter Payton, as remarkable as all those yards he gets is the fact he's played so long in his ninth year, taking all those hits and has never been hurt. 
Very slow always, it seems, coming back to the huddle. But there are a few players in the NFL who have that, that first step, first up the field like Tony Dorsett, along with Walter Payton, Kirk Warner when he's healthy. He can accelerate. All of a sudden, he's eaten up 10 yards, and then he's gone. Now the Cowboys, after a gain of about two yards, have a second down and eight, just over the midfield strike. White making his first start at quarterback for Dallas this season. Up the middle he throws, and Kowski, his Pro Bowl tight end, catches the ball at the 44-yard line of Indianapolis. Cliff Odom quickly knocks him down. It's going to bring up third and about three. So far, this is as we expected. But their inability to run the ball on a regular basis, it's no surprise that the Dallas Cowboys come out throwing a little play action fake here and there just to test each one of the defensive backs, find each receiver open, and uh, hopefully to, to get the defensive backs up close to the line of scrimmage. Brings up third down and three, so the Cowboys go to the shotgun. Renfro comes in motion back to the line. Danny White fires. He's got Renfro coming across with the first down for the Cowboys. Mike Renfro out of Texas Christian. Only a Houston Oiler came in motion and cut back and lost the secondary. He was wide open. So far, nothing fancy. As I said, just trying to get it to each one of the receivers. You saw Donnelly coming in motion, and what has created is a pick by the two receivers releasing upfield. Donnelly underneath the linebacker coverage. Just enough for a first down. Seven yards and a first down, so Dallas marches on. Opening sequence of downs for the Cowboys. Three first downs after taking the kickoff. First quarter at Texas Stadium, Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy. Danny White gives off, and Dorsett doesn't get a thing. Getting the block and making the hit was a very enthusiastic rookie from Syracuse. Blaze Witter playing the right end. He was the second-round draft choice of Indianapolis. I think that little run right there, Don, just to keep the, ball, the Indianapolis Colts honest. I think their intent is just simply to throw the ball in this first series. Indianapolis runs very basic coverages. They are not a team that can come out with a complex defense as the flex is run by Dallas. It's the eighth play of the opening drive for the Cowboys. Second down and ten coming up. Or set the lone setback. Look how far off the line he is. Yeah. Yard drop back. He's got a long way to run if he gets it, but White's going to throw it. He's got a man. Tony Hill. Almost. Don, he has two receivers wide open. Doug Bosby underneath that pattern. Came from the strong side of the formation. Hill, this is on Tate Randall. They're going right at the weakness of the Indianapolis Colt defense. They just simply are not all pro players back there. A lot of them are free agents. The Colts realize that. Obviously, so do the Dallas Cowboys. But it goes as a long out, and so it brings up third down and ten for the Cowboys. Dallas with the ball at the 37-yard line of Indianapolis. White with a big rush gets it away. It's going to be dropped down at the 23-yard line as Danny White was pressured by Blaze Winter. Winter likes to play football. Yes, he does. What the uh, Colts will do is they don't bring in a fourth defensive lineman. They just rush Vernon Maxwell 56 and run games up front all over the place. Right of the screen. This is a very, very dangerous pass to throw. You don't throw the ball late down the middle like that. You could uh, certainly put it in the hands of somebody in a blue jersey. John Warren just called in to punt for the Cowboys. Danny White with a groin hold. He's unable to punt, so they got this free agent in. He was driving a grocery truck <laughs> earlier this week out of Tennessee. Nesby Glasgow is going to let the punt go into the end zone. Oh. not going to. The Cowboys Great. are going to get it inside the five-yard line. Oh, it's a touchback. How oh, they ruled it got in. A lot of Cowboys were around there to slap it back, but apparently they didn't do it. A little over-exuberance there. Everyone trying to make the play, and as the ball bounces around, as long as they can keep it out of the end zone, they're going to put they're going to put the, the Indianapolis Colts in a big spot. We'll watch here. The ball takes a great bounce for the Dallas Cowboys, but it's kicked by Bates and it goes in the end zone. And we'll be back. Colts will have the ball. In the middle of your picture is Carl Howard, number 21. Now watch it. He steps into the end zone. 
then comes back out and touches the ball. Therefore, the touchback. You can't go in the end zone, come out, and down it. Good point. So the Colts get the ball at their 20. First and 10 for Indianapolis. Their first possession in this scoreless game. The pitch back goes to super fast. Randy McMillan, who cuts back across the 20 and out to the 22. Hagel at quarterback, Dickey and McMillan, two big backs with great speed. Raymond Butler's the best deep threat on the Indianapolis receiving floor. Dave Young, a big tight end from Purdue, playing much better after missing with two teams. Giants in Buffalo, and I think he even spent some time at New England. Offensive line hurting without Chris Hinton, a great young player from Northwestern, but it's come together to run the ball well. Again, the Colts go back to the run, this time to Curtis Dickey. Native Texan, played at Texas A&M, a world-class sprinter. Cowboys front line, all number one draft choices. Too tall, John Dutton, the former Colt. Randy White, who's the best in Jeff Coach. Linebackers, Hickman, Bruning, and Dickerson. Dickerson's a blitzer. Bruning, a little bit injured in the middle. Walls and Fellows, two good corners. Bill Bates starts at strong safety with Plinksdale out with an injury. Michael Downs, Coach Landry says, has been the most consistent defender. Third down and four, and Dallas goes to a number of defensive backs. Bagel, going to have time, but does he have anybody? He can run well, but not on this play as the Cowboys close it down. They're working hard trying to keep Randy White off the play. Look at all these Colts sitting on him. They better work hard. You see, at 64 behind him, Donaldson. <laughs> How would you like to go out there every Sunday knowing that you're going to be double teamed on every play and he still makes still <laughs> the tackle? They have to play this guy double. He works overtime. There ain't no doubt about that. So now, Ron Stark comes in to punt the ball for Indianapolis, standing back at his 14-yard line. There's the deep man for Dallas, Gary Allen. No score in the first quarter. 7.53 to play in it. Cowboys ready for their second possession. Hint the whistle might have been too long getting the snap off. Correct. You called it, Don. Delay, five yards. Jim Tunney, the referee, there's his crew. Work in the game at Texas Stadium, the home of America's team. It's 78 and sunny. As you know, the playing field is not covered. The stands are kind of a semi-dome here at Irving, Texas. Semi-dome, yes. Ron Stark, the best punter in the National Football League with a 46-yard of punt average. First team all-pro punter, he unloads. Whoa. A tremendous punt. Allen goes all the way back, back pedals to the 19-yard line. But then he gets room to go, and the Colts cover. 57-yard punt by Ron Stark. Nine-yard return, and Dallas will try again as the Cowboys send out their offense for a second try, and we'll be back right after this. Cowboys lead the series at the Colts' that last victory was in the biggest game of all. The Colts beat the Cowboys in Super Bowl V, 16-13. That's a long time ago, wasn't it? Long time ago, and a win they still remember, particularly in Baltimore. Oh, Super Bowl victory over Dallas. Now it is first down and ten. Indianapolis defense with those aggressive young linemen down and looking to go. Danny White again throws the out, this time to Renfro, and again the Cowboys have a first down. Indianapolis playing run. Cowboys figuring it out. A punt return, a fumble return by Dwayne Woodruff, 65 yards. Counted for the Steeler touchdown. Green Bay has now gone in front of Detroit, 7 to nothing. Don, pretty obvious the Cowboys are going to pick on the backside of the zone coverage of the Indianapolis Colts. And they're going to keep doing it until they can get someone up to the line of scrimmage there with an eight or nine yard cushion white's going to keep throwing it out there those corners are a mile off the dallas wide receivers and danny white stands in fires downfield and the ball is caught beautifully a tremendous play it advances the ball down inside the 40 yard line tony hill went high right in the middle of two defenders and it's a 23 yard gain for dallas boy did they miss this guy in the first guy five games of the season see hill at the top of the screen He's had now 17 catches, including 
the previous two weeks and today this ball is not thrown particularly well but Hill goes and gets it as they say not thrown bad though when they come down with it well when they're caught yeah they're thrown well but receivers like to have that thing around the numbers you know, don't stretch me out back there that was a big play by Tony Hill and so the Cowboys are again across midfield first down and 10 Dallas scoreless first quarter game wearing on 645 to play in first quarter Free ball, and who's got it? Indianapolis. Yep. The ball does draw a crowd, and finally, the Colts come up with a football, so that aggressive young defense, which gives up yards, but also makes big plays, delivers, and Frank Cush now will send his offense back out. We'll watch again. It appears to get stripped away by, who is it? Cooks, 98, gets his hand in there. And whoever invented the football to have points on the end was a genius. Watch that thing bounce. Tony Dorsett's done that before this season, coughed up the ball. Watch Maxwell here. See the trap. There's some hitting out there. <laughs> now we got a live action. Oh. dodges the rush, but then goes down at the 38. Two tall Jones coming like a freight train. Bagel did well to stay in the game, ducking him. Colt somewhat out of character there. Play action pass on first down. Trying to take advantage of the flex defense, which is generally run on first down. They don't get a lot of pass rush out of that flex defense, but good thing he ducked. Sacks have been a problem. There's Randy White, double teamed again. And again. And again. Out of live action, second and 15. Indianapolis powers the ball right at the Dallas defense. Randy McMillan runs it. Coming in with a 4.5 per carry average. Having a great year in the opinion of his coach, Kirk. One of the things we're going to feature today is Ben Hutt, number 64, the Indianapolis Colts against Randy White. Now, it's not that we want to pick on Ben Hutt, but this is the first time he's faced Randy White. And from what I've gleaned from other coaches, one of the things that helps an offensive lineman against the master is to face him several times. Then you get used to his roof. First time, he can shock you. the ball away but there's too much on it. Who's are going for the ball and there might be a hold against the Colts in the backfield. Now you can see the attention that Randy White is getting. Matt Boozer was the intended receiver. The uh, Cowboys have allowed opposing quarterbacks to run for over 140 yards through eight games of this season. But Randy White that time they ran the play action fake right at him. Setting penalties. Holding 66. Illegal contact. 24 defense. Play will go over. Still third down. Once again, they're running the play action right at Randy White so he gets help with the running back. There's the running back, the center, and the guard. Three guys on one. Somebody should come open from that defensive line to put pressure on Fagel here eventually. But you don't have any choice, Tom. I mean, if you could nail his shoes to the ground, that would help. But you can't do that. in what they call their 40 defense which is four defensive linemen seven defensive backs and Billy Bates strong safety at about 190 pounds stands in there like a middle linebacker put pressure on Fagel just overthrown and again Ron Stark on the field hits it with that left foot last time 57 yard punt Gary Allen back deep again for the Cowboys Racing's $10 million day is coming to NBC Sports, the Breeders' Cup Championship Series. See, the Cowboys have moved the ball on their two previous possessions, but there's no points up for either team, and now Dallas has the ball back inside their 20 after another good punt and no return by Ron Stark. Danny White, who took over for Roger Staubach in 1980, starting for the first time this season for the Cowboys, and he 
hands off to Tony Dorsett, and Dorsett breaks it and gets out across the 25-yard line. The main objective of the Colt defense was not to let Dorsett get away. They had to stay in position for those cutbacks. It's an offensive line that's been somewhat shuffled throughout this season, Don. Injuries everywhere. Good trap pull. Dallas is also one of those teams that historically has taken college defensive linemen, made them offensive linemen because uh, defensive people are supposed to have a mean streak or maybe some brain cells missing. It makes them different and aggressive at the line of scrimmage. And so he scored the Bears touchdown from a couple of yards out. Extra point missed. Chicago leading 6-0. Second down and two now. Dorsett running hard and gets into open field with that remarkable ability to come low and accelerate and change direction. He's almost gone every time he gets it. Dave Randall on the uh, on the tackle. Now the interesting thing, remember the last offensive play that the Dallas Cowboys had? Tony Dorsett fumbled the football. Tom Landry realizes the value of Tony Dorsett for his football team, so he comes right back the next time on the field, gives it to him twice in a row. Dorsett comes in with a 3.9 yard per rush average. Danny White, who of course played for Frank Cush at Arizona State, directing the Cowboys offense. First and 10, Dallas looking to throw and putting it up, and Cosby is there to take it Ooh. down. Takes some hellacious hits, but he comes away with the football on a first down for the Cowboys, a 20-yard gain. Well, those two running plays set this up. This is a fine reception by Cosby. He's got to go up to get it. Well thrown, too, by Danny White, just over outstretched arms of Odom. That's an excellent hit. But so far, they've thrown it to both wide receivers, thrown it to the tight end twice, just kind of spreading it around here. Nesby Glasgow, the free safety for Indianapolis, got the running start and the hard pop on Cosby, but he kept the ball, and now again, the Cowboys, as they've done on their earlier possessions, have crossed midfield again, but still there's no score with 3-12 to play in the first quarter. Dorsett, change in direction, not much there. He did well to get to the line of scrimmage. Barry Krause, the big inside linebacker from Alabama, number 55, made the play. He's having a great year for the Colts. Yeah, well played by Krause, too. You'll see he's down in the line of scrimmage, reads that trap, is inside it. 65 for the Dallas Cowboys is Kurt Peterson. He went right by Barry Krause. Krause there to make the tackle. A big backer, almost 250 pounds, 6'3". The Eagles. Winners of three straight games. Move in front of the favorite Cardinals 7-0 in the first quarter. Second and 12 for Dallas to pitch back to Dorsett. Blockers are there, and he keeps on weaving through traffic. Comes inside the 45-yard line of Indianapolis. Is out of bounds at about the 42. Ray safety, Glasgow again making the play for the Colts. And what I think is an interesting point about uh, the Dallas Cowboys, they do have a 5-3 and three record. But do you realize they've been outscored in every quarter by their opponents, except the fourth quarter? They're quick to point out, Trump, they've not put together four good quarters of football yet. They had one of the all-time fourth quarters last Sunday night. Sure did. Came from 21 points down in the fourth quarter to tie New Orleans, and then they beat the Saints in overtime. Packers playing some good football at Green Bay, leading Detroit 14-0 first quarter. Third down, a long three coming up for the Cowboys as... Danny White's throw intended for one of his young tight ends, Fred Cornwell, a rookie from Southern California, a little high. That brings up fourth down for Dallas, and John Warren comes back out. Cowboys move the ball from their own end, get across midfield, and then come up empty on the third down throws. 2.22 to play in the first quarter. No score as John Warren drops that. Where'd they get him, Trump? Right off of Cabbage Front? Yeah, Gilbrand said... Uh, they called on Friday and said, where is uh, Mr. Warren? Said, well, he's delivering produce around Knoxville, Tennessee. He said, get him to the phone. We need him in Dallas. Right now, he hits a football in not very well. But it does take a cowboy roll and comes inside the 15-yard line. It's covered there. Rohrer comes down. Jeff Rohrer, a linebacker from Yale. Walter Payton meets Marcus Allen next Sunday on NBC Sports. It'll be a day to be remembered. Well remembered, and there were some great ones like Lance Allworth and Belitnikoff, Don Maynard of the Jets, great receivers all. They'll be featured at halftime on NFL 84. Right now, the Colts have the ball deep in their own end. First down, they go to the run. McMillan gets a load of Randy White as he tries the right side of the Dallas defense. 
Jeffco was also on the play. McMillan is fourth here from Pittsburgh. Yeah, look at that. Uh, one of the only times that they put one man on Randy White. Dan Hutt, he's got to handle Randy White by himself. And this flex defense is interesting in that they really don't try to penetrate. All they try to do is stand up the offensive lineman and cut down the options of the running back. The tech areas of the field, you see them off the line in the flex. Quick out. Booza takes the throw from Mike Cagle, and Booza turns up field on a second down and seven play. He's going to be just short of a first down. We remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Third now and less than a foot for the Colts as they go from the 22 yard line. And I got three tight ends in the ball game. Two power backs who can fly, and here comes one for the sticky. He Ooh. dives ahead, and the Cowboys make the defensive play. Stripping the blocking was Eugene Lockhart, number 56, the man they call Mean Eugene, the hitting machine. Ron Fellows in there, too. Watch it from behind the offense. You see they're able to slide across the line of, line of scrimmage because those defensive linemen just take up space. They're going to measure here, Don. I don't think they're even close to it. It didn't look like it. They're still going to measure. Big play by the Dallas defense on third and inches. They stop the Colts, a team that runs the ball among the best in the NFL this season. And so Ron Stark comes back out looking to unload a punt to get the Colts out of trouble. 123 remaining in the first quarter. The Colts looking, still looking for their first, first down. No score. Block running, 120 to play in the first quarter. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas. Clear and sunny, 78 degrees, low humidity, perfect afternoon after two weeks of rain throughout Texas. The Colts in the blue uniforms have given up yardage, but no points so far to the Cowboys as Stark has hit two good punts, gets off another one. Long and downfield, Gary Allen is pedaling back to his 26. Looking for a channel, not much there, lots of blue shirts sweeping him down. 53-yard punt and return of just five yards. So again, the work of all-pro punter Ron Stark gets the Colts out of their own end. The Cowboys have it back. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. As you can see, the Cowboys don't lose many in their home arena, Texas Stadium. They have the ball again, starting out now from their 32-yard line. Danny White shifts his lone backdoor set, swings it out. White fires, and again, Tony Hill going against the corner, playing 10 yards off him, comes to a spot, stops and catches a 12-yarder. Been there every time, Don. Preston Davis, the free agent corner from Baylor, a rookie, knows what he's up against. He doesn't want it to go the distance. Well, I think it's the design of the defense, although you, you want someone to recover from that drop a little quicker. He should have some underneath help there from an outside linebacker so that uh, Danny White doesn't have a straight line to throw right to Tony Hill. Hill and White Lightning Donnelly. Doug Donnelly from Ohio State. Both are deployed to the right side. Two tight ends in the game. Dorsett comes right up the middle. Bumble. Free ball again. And the Colts say they've got it, and so does the referee. So the Dallas Cowboys cough it up twice in the first quarter, and the Colts capitalize both times, as with no time now remaining, first quarter coming to an end, the ball goes back to Indianapolis. He jukes around a great deal here, but he does appear to have the ball firmly in place, and then it's stripped away. Geez, I couldn't pick up the number. We'll try to get it, though. Looks like Cliff Bodum may have gotten his hand on it. Maxwell may have made, a, made the recovery. Well, Coach Cush, his team finding a way on defense with big plays. Dorsett's been running well, but the Colts defense been pounding him, and twice he's coughed it up, and twice. Indianapolis has scooped up the ball, and now the Colts have their best field position of this game. First and ten, and Cagle takes a drop and hits his man. Booza turning up field goes inside the Dallas 40, and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. A gain of 15 yards on the play, and a first down. First big gainer for the Colts today. Ron Fellows was beaten on the play. Stumbled a little bit, Fellows did. Trying to recover, get back to uh, Booza. The 
Colts do not grade very high in offense or defense, but Indianapolis does have one very valuable asset. They're the best rushing club in the American Conference. Their biggest gain, though, coming on that throw, 15 yards, and now they're down to the 38-yard line of Dallas in a scoreless game, second quarter. Nagel with those great backs set in the eye. Second one through is Curtis Dickey, and he's down to the 35-yard line. Now, while we have a moment, we switch to NFL 84 in New York. All right, Don, southeast of you down in Houston, the Oilers have scored. Herky Walls out of Texas had caught only two passes this year, but he is a splendid open field runner. And on this pass from Warren Moon, breaks one, setting up a one-yard touchdown run by Larry Moriarty, something that hasn't happened very often. The Oilers lead it. Thank you, Bill. No, it has not happened very often. Those Oilers needing all they can get in uh, what is so far a winless season. They go into today's game 0-8. Second down now and eight as uh, Gid is up the middle. Cowboys come up thumping. John Dutton led the charge along with Mike Hegman, an outside linebacker. Colts on that pass play we just saw. That was, that was their first first down. You see those guys just stand the offensive lineman up. Dutton, too tall, Jones, 72. All they do is try to take the middle of the offensive lineman, stand him up. So basically there are no options available for the running back. Ted Leahy hit a 46-yard field goal to put the Jets in front of New England. Green Bay now leading Detroit 14-3 after the Lions field goal. Here at Texas Stadium, it is nothing-nothing second quarter. Dallas with seven defensive backs. Third down, six coming up for Indianapolis. Cagle makes a deep drop. He fires and has a man, but he's behind Booza. And so it's incomplete and brings up fourth down. Now, you remember what uh, Frank Bush was telling us last evening? He said the only problem with Mike Pagel, Pagel is he's just not an accurate passer. He'll throw it a little bit behind or a little bit ahead. That and can get the problem. ball off. Oh, yeah. In that particular instance, had uh, Pagel thrown the ball right on the money, Booza picks up the first down. That happens. Uh, you're rushed back there. You got pressure. An inaccurate quarterback can defuse an offense in a hurry, but Pagel some transformation on the sidelines as to what they're going to do on fourth down. They let the clock expire for the first period. Kick it the other way. We'll be back to Texas Stadium where the wave is sweeping this arena. Back to live action now. The Colts lining up for a 51-yard field goal by Raul Alegre. And a big problem for Ron Stark. Downfield it goes, and it's intercepted by the Cowboys. Bill Bates has the ball, and he fights his way across the 35-yard line. So an errant snap, and they never get the field goal fly away, and Ron Stark, a good runner, got away from the rush, but his Look, throw was intercepted. That's a good snap. Stark should hang on to that. Allegre got nailed. Bates makes the interception. Michael Downs and Ron Fellows in all over him there. Well, that's a turnover you certainly don't want to happen in that situation. Actually, the spot front for the line of scrimmage here is just about where it was had they missed the field goal. And Allegre can hit it from that far. He's been troubled by injuries this year after having a phenomenal season a year ago. 30 of 35 for the Colts at Baltimore. 86 percent. He was as good as there was in the NFL. First down and 10 now. Cowboys on offense, Indianapolis on defense, which has been the story much of the game, but there's no score. Ron Strings turns the corner and Vernon Maxwell, with all his speed at the outside linebacker position, catches him and throws him down. The game clock winds down to 13 minutes to play in the first half. So far, Colts have done an outstanding job of stringing out this running game of the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys able to pass it. Had very little luck running it. Bears have scored another touchdown. Jim McMahon throwing to Dennis McKinnon for the score. Bears the leaders in the bare knuckle division, the NFC Central. Cowboys come into this game in a three-way tie in the NFC East with the Redskins and the Cardinals all at five and three and the Giants and the Eagles just the game behind the totally bunched division. Danny White throws in a great play again. Tony Hill sacrificed.
missing his body for the love of the game. Makes the hits and keeps the ball. A 17-yard gain for Dallas. White has shown great finesse here throwing the football. You see Hill at the top. It's inside-outside coverage. Now watch, you, watch White throw it right over the linebacker, Krause, 55. Once again, stretched out to catch the football. Takes wow. a big heart to stretch out and go into the defense, the teeth of it. Yeah, great hospitalization insurance, too. But he bounced right back and is going to stay in the game. So now Danny White has thrown the ball 13 times, and he's completed 10 for 123 yards. But no points. No points. Nothing, nothing. Second quarter, first and 10 Dallas. 49-yard line of the Cowboys. Dorsett dipping to the outside. He's still the fastest cowboy. Gets ahead for about four. It'll be second down and six, and now we go to NFL 84 in New York. All right, Don, in Foxborough, the Jets lead New England 10 to nothing. On the previous play, Freeman McGill had been stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but Joe Walton came right back to call number 24. He goes 53 yards to set up a touchdown pass by Ken O'Brien, who had replaced Pat Ryan. It's 10 to nothing. Raymond Berry's debut, uh, an ex-Colt great, a Hall of Famer, as the coach of New England. That last play came back, incidentally. There was a holding call signaled against the Cowboys. There's the referee, Jim Tunney. So the Cowboys will fall back inside their 45-yard line. Holding, 85, during the run, still first down. Fred Cornwell, the rookie tight end, is called for the hold, and so the play comes back now to the 42-yard line. First down and 20 coming up. Don knows that 10 yard hitches that the Cowboys are running are still there with the 10 yard cushion by the Indianapolis Colts defensive backs. I'm surprised they don't come back to that. Cardinals get on the board. Team that is really developing into a contender. 7 7. Cardinals and the Eagles of Philadelphia. Now on first and long yardage, Danny White sets two wide receivers left, brings one in motion in Donnelly. One man is wide to the right up the middle and he gets Ron Springs coming out of the backfield. 30th reception of this season for Ron Springs, a former Buckeye from Ohio State. Barry Krause stuck him along with Johnny Cooks. The ball is back to the original line of scrimmage so it's going to be second down and 10 for Dallas. Tom Landry said sometimes Trump you have to be a long way down to come all the way back and I think we were a long way down and made that comeback. He was looking for his team possibly to explode today as he talks with his offensive man, Jim Schaffner, on the sidelines. So far, the Cowboys have moved the ball until they get down to the Indianapolis end, and they come up short. Now, Dorsett breaks it, gets inside the 40. He's ahead for 12 yards and a first down for the Cowboys. They have so many weapons, this Dallas Cowboy offense. They can just pick and choose where they want to go. Watch, you should see the trap block. And watch Dorsetti kind of waits for a minute, sees who's going to be where, and then squirts up through there. And that acceleration, that first step, once he decides where he's going to go, that separates a lot of running backs. And it puts Dorsett at the head of the class. He's busted some good ones here today, but he is also, as you're very well aware if you've been with us from the outset, fumbled the ball to the Colts twice in the game, stopping Dallas drives. Getting the yards, but he's taking some hard hits and giving it back. First and 10, Dallas. With a deep drop. Going long for the end zone. Touchdown. Tony Hill is in there for a Cowboy score. No play. 38 yards and a Dallas touchdown. Well, he came back. Trump, the offense came back. You're right. And what that. What this has been set up by are those short patterns one run by the receivers. You see Hill just splits the free safety and the cornerback. And in a foot race, the Indianapolis Colt defensive backs are not great speed people. Tony Hill is. Well thrown, too, by Danny White. He's thrown the ball with great finesse today, right on the money. He really has Danny White having a big day. And finally, the Cowboys crack the end zone. First touchdown reception of the year for Tony Hill, 38 yards out. Raphael Septian, an automatic man on the extra points, drills it up and through, and so at 9. 53 to play in the first half. The Dallas Cowboys finally strike, going into the end zone from way out on the throw. The touchdown, Tony Hill. 
talk about a comeback, Bob Trumpy. This guy's <laughs> had a comeback. Missed five games, and now look what he's done. Nine, seven, and six already today. The offensive plan for the Cowboys has been number 11 to number 80. The last one, Danny White to Tony Hill for 38 yards in the first score of the game. Those uh, six catches today already produced 108 yards for Tony Hill, too. See the distance of the drive. Now we have 9.53 to play in the first half. Colts have had some open receivers, too. They'll probably be throwing it more against the Dallas defense. Pick off downfield. Defenses has problems holding on the ball. There's a penalty marker down, so the Colts are going to get the football, but they're going to be backed up into their own end. Not where you want to be against Danny White and company, or against Randy White and company, as the defense for the Cowboys comes out. Now, in case the fans out there are wondering, Ah, uh, yes, we couldn't have a return without an illegal block in the back. In case the fans are wondering, the 108 yards by Tony Hill, how close is he to the record? He's a long way off. Bob Hayes holds the uh, Cowboys record, 246 yards receiving in one game. Tony Dorsett helped set up that throw. Run back, number 90, half the distance of the goal line, first down. Cincinnati and Houston are now tied 7-7. Kinnebrew just ran for a touchdown for the Bengals. And New Orleans on a Richard Todd uh, Hokey Gajan throw. Orleans leading the Browns 7-0. NFL 84 at halftime will have the scores, the stories, and the big plays. Right now, the Colts go to the run on first down, and Curtis Dickey comes out and rockets out to the 15-yard line. He doesn't have the cut move that Tony Dorsett has, but... He gets an open lane, just a little bit of room. There's nobody out there that can touch him. We got a change in the defense of the Dallas Cowboys. Eugene, the hitting machine, Lockhart, taking the place of Bob Brunick. Brunick's got a bad back. First time they've run to the right of their offense there, the Indianapolis Colts. Hitting machine missed the tackle there, though, and getting ahead for an eight-yard gain, Curtis Dickey. Dickey again looking to the outside. Cowboys do a good job handing him in the strong safety. Bill Bates coming up and forcing the run and then making the play. Yeah, this is such a difficult defense to run against because they really don't try for penetration. They just try to stand those people up, hold their ground at the line of scrimmage, and look at the people there to make the tackle. One, two, three, four, five Dallas Cowboys around Curtis Dickey. Hegman, 58, and Lockhart, 56, all go out. Is now on third down and about three. Cowboys go to their pass defense with extra DBs coming in the game and the Colts deploy three wide receivers. Stop ready from the shotgun. Cowboys showing blitz. See if it comes. Now they back off. Oh! He got it! He did. Mike Pagel called his own number and caught the Cowboys looking for the throw and he gets ahead of the 20-yard line. It's a first down for Indianapolis. How about that for a call? Now what deep, the defense they run is called a 40 defense and you see those defensive backs there. They're dropping out in coverage. Well, Pagel, obviously, they thought about this during the week. And uh, it bounced right that time for Pagel. An easy first down, just the way they draw it up. Fumbled his way to a first down. Not the way they like to do it, but the end result got them four new downs. So now the Colts trailing 7-0 in the second quarter. Go from their 21st and 10. Takes the Dickey. Here's the throw. Almost intercepted. They were going deep to the tight end, Dave Young. You may notice on Dave Young's hand, he has a splint. He has two metal rods in the ring finger of his right hand. He split that thing, fractured it on Thursday, and is playing today. You've got to admire his guts. Ball under thrown by Pagel. Brings up second down and 10 with 7.39 to play in the first half. Cowboys lead the game. They scored not that long ago. On a 38-yard touchdown throw from Danny White to Tony Hill. Cowboys with a tremendous advantage in total yards and time of possession, but were unable to crack the end zone until a short time ago. And now Pagel, pump faking, shuffles it off. Free ball, and the Cowboys look like they might have it. Maybe it's incomplete. No, we hit the ground. Danny White tipped it, had a piece of it, but didn't hold on before it hit the ground, so it'll bring up third down and 10. That was just a simple hitch pattern by the Indianapolis Colt wide receivers. Pagel looked this side, and the defense rotated this way, so he had to go to the other side. He's just trying to get it down the line of scrimmage. Randy White actually came off in coverage on that particular instance. He used to play linebacker for this, this defense. 
Colts have a problem, as you know, from coming from behind. Yes. The pass offense grades out near the bottom. They didn't want that to happen. Right now they're down seven, nothing with third and a throwing down coming. Third and ten. Ah, that's on Indianapolis. Cowboys sure give you a lot to think about yes. on offense and defense. Constantly shifting formations, looking to confuse to catch the quarterback guessing. Five yards. That time, Jim Mills, the right tackle, a former Cowboy, was called for the five-yard penalty, so it'll bring up third down and 15. Interesting. Mills is 6'9 and weighs a bunch. Going against two tall Jones, who is 6'9, weighs a bunch. Two big people standing in there. It's like the NBA. We got another 6'9er in there, and Paz Derek, the offensive tackle for Dallas. Uh, this is tough now for Indianapolis. Uh, you're playing into uh, Dallas's hands now. Third down and about 15 yards. Four-man rush. They may blitz. They may do anything from here, Don. They'll probably be blitzing. They go to the draw. Do the Colts and Curtis. Sandy McMillan breaks it across the 20 and gets out to the 23-yard line. Everson Walls knocked him down. Good idea. Almost broke loose in there. When you've got seven defensive backs, you hope you can get a mismatch of 270-pound offensive lineman on a 180-pound defensive back, but these guys for the Dallas Cowboys are very active, very, very active. And they got Dennis Thurman and Bill Bates at the line of scrimmage playing like linebackers, and they can, they're excellent tacklers. The most important player so far in the field today for Indianapolis has been the putter, Ron Stark. He's really drilled the ball three times, and he's ready to try again. He'll hit the ball from somewhere around his 12. Gary Allen is back deep for Dallas, standing at his 31. 6.44 to play in the first half. Clock running high. Whoa. Viral way downfield. This guy is phenomenal. Putter down to the 22, and here comes Allen. Looking to turn up field. Colts grab him and sweep him under at the 25. 54 yellow Whoa. punt by Ron Stark. He likes it here in Big D. But the Cowboys have the ball back when we return. Cowboys finally got the big play of their last possession. They've taken a 7 0 lead. Colts have a problem moving the ball. Yeah, you're right. This is exactly what Frank Bush told us last night, Don. He did not want his team to get in this situation where they got to catch up with the Dallas Cowboys. This is not a catch up football team. They got to control the ball, keep the ball out of the hands of their opponent's offense. So far, they haven't done it. Danny White on first down throws, and again, he has Tony Hill with seven catches already. One for six points, the only score of the game. Hills ahead for only about three yards. The Jets now leading 10-3 as New England got a field goal in the second quarter at Foxborough. Kansas City out in front of Tampa Bay, 7-0. Ken Lacey, a two-yard touchdown run for the Chiefs in that one. Houston now trailing Cincinnati 14-7. Kinnebrew with two touchdown runs for the Bengals. Tony Hill's personal record is nine catches and 213 yards. He's held short of the yardage, but not the number of catches. He has seven as Von Springs runs the ball on second down and six. Dallas going into the left side of the Indianapolis defense gets out to the 34-yard line. So far, Don, the Cowboy offense has been able to do just about anything it's wanted to do with 530 left in the first half. Take away those two turnovers, and it's been a, a Cowboy-dominated first half. It is already, but even more so. Those receivers, as you know, Trump love to go back to the huddle and talk about what they got. Yeah, you're right. Tony Hill's got something every time down. And to, to my knowledge, the Colts haven't changed the coverage either. It's still there. Third down and less than two. They go to the run. Ron Springs runs the ball, but he's going to be short of a first down. Talking about receivers, talking about what they have. Remember, we're going to see some of the great AFL receivers remembered. We'll talk about that after we watch Barry Krause make a stick. These linebackers for the Colts have done an excellent job this entire season. Krause there to make the tackle. A little trap play by the tight end didn't work. Don Maynard, who you'll see featured in that halftime, once came back to the huddle, and Joe Namath asked him what he had. He said, Anything you got all day. <laughs> That's true. Well, about 600 balls. Yes, he? he did. He must have gotten open a bunch. Anson Goodwin's back in the old AFL. Bambi. Otis Taylor. 
Here's a punt now by the Cowboys. John Warren hits a good one downfield, forcing Nestle Glasgow into a fair catch. Not an easy one into the sun at the 29-yard line. 36 yards and no return. So the Colts stop the Cowboys that time, and Indianapolis has the ball. We'll be back to Texas Stadium right after this. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky back at Texas Stadium. You see how the Cowboys stand through eight games so far. Not producing the points like they did a year ago when they jumped off to that first half advantage in the NFC East. They know how to win, do the Cowboys, and now Pagel screens one out. It's caught by Randy McMillan, blockers in front, and McMillan twists and fights his way ahead for about eight yards. As we pause briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. KPRC TV, Channel 2, Houston. Trump to get the play away is with four minutes left to play in the first half. Dallas continues to lead this game 7 0 on the touchdown throw from Danny White to Tony Hill in the second quarter. John, I like that call. I like that call a lot. I think they could, they could use that screen a great deal more before this day is up. Got to offset those down linemen coming on the run. All those number ones teeing off and flying at the snap of the ball as Curtis Dickey takes it on second and two. And again, Dallas looking for the short yardage run, stuffs it. Randy White fought off the block and again delivered a head-on hit. Man who's been to the Pro Bowl six straight years. At this point in the season, this Dallas Cowboy defense has been ranked dead last in the NFL. Rushing defense allowing their opponents 4.7 yards per rush. In this half, they've certainly turned that around, haven't they? They have. Mandy White was a key guy last Sunday night, forcing that fumble on the snake. He might have sent Kenny Stabler into retirement with that hit. Did send Kenny, retirement. Kenny Stabler into retirement on that hit. Third down now, and less than a yard. Much less. Only about a foot. Colts came up short. You remember earlier on the same play at the other end. This time we have McMillan fighting and lunging across the 40, and he has a first down for Indianapolis. Randy White was there to make the tackle again. Watch right to the left of it. There you see 54. Man, I see. How do you stop that guy? I mean, if you hit him, he knocks you down. If you try to trap him, he's not there. Mm, I'm glad I'm up here. I want no part of that. Paul McDonald just threw five yards to Ozzie Newsom as Cleveland has tied New Orleans 7 all. St. Louis leading Philadelphia 17 to 14. Lomax just threw to Howard or to Pat Kelly. And now we have Fagel fighting for his life. Penalty markers down. Dickey running ahead, but it's all going to come back. It looks like we're going to have a hold signaled against Indianapolis. Cowboy defensive lineman right now, an overmatch for the offensive blockers of the Colts, at least on the passing down. Anthony Dickerson, 51, tripping by the Colt offensive line. Anthony Dickerson on the blitz to the outside it was the first one to flush Pagel. And you can see he's a resourceful quarterback. Watch this pressure that Pagel has. From the right, you'll see Dickerson on the ground. That's two tall Jones in there, too. And that's just about everybody. It's also Eugene, the hitting machine, Lockhart. But it's all back. So the ball is placed at the 31-yard line of Indianapolis. First down and 20 comes up for the Colts. They come into the game with a 3-5 and five record. Lost a tough one to St. Louis. Could very easily have made the turn at 4-4. Four and four. The biggest win in a long time came last Sunday. And now as McMillan is hit at the line of scrimmage, he spins off on first and 20 and gets back out to the 35. Lockhart and Hegman, two Cowboy linebackers, knocked him down. Now you see this, this cold offense is based on play action passing. What play action passing does, if your running game is successful, keep those linebackers at the line of scrimmage, you got receivers open. With the Colts inability to this point to run, the linebackers are back there in coverage, you got nobody to throw it to. Two minutes left to go in the first half. Timeout is called on the field. We take a pause for this word. Cowboys have dominated up and down the field with that big advantage in yards, 3-1 to one over Indianapolis, but only a 7-0 lead for the Cowboys. Yeah, the Colts have gotten very little, but as long as they can stay in the ball game, That's it. they got a chance to win on some fluke play, a tip pass. Well, that's what they did last week, but as Chuck Noll, the coach of the Steelers, said, Trump, he said that wasn't lucky. He said the way they were playing hard and harder as the game wore on, right. something big is going to happen. And that's what Coach preaches. Keep playing hard and concentrating. 
It's going to go your way. They hope. Lots of folks standing by in New York. Bob and Amad. Dylan Axe with NFL 84. As he makes a turn today in the second half of the season. Here's a throw downfield. And did he catch the ball? No. The officials say no. Ray That's Butler moved in on the ball. Hagel is a very good athlete. Also out of Arizona State. Recruited there by Frank Bush. Not as accurate as Trump was mentioning earlier as a backup quarterback who actually started last weekend Mark Herman Frank Cush says that without having a whole lot of explosion Hagel does give you a lot of big plays sometimes when the pass blocking breaks down with his ability to run and I wonder if there will be a choice made by Frank Cush maybe the second half bring Herman in throw the ball a little better although the character of this team is to keep running it we got to stay with that theme they're down in 18 here comes Hagel throwing on the run oh. and that ball was sheer drop Dickey had a play to go the distance. And the penalty marker is also down in the Dallas secondary. You know, one thing I can tell you about this Pagel kid, Don, is that he has a great presence out there and can really see the football field. You see a lot of quarterbacks. Well, it's going to be against Dallas. Uh, the Colts are going to keep possession, but it's very difficult for a quarterback scrambling around to see an open receiver down there. Pagel does that very, very well. He just instantly recognizes a, a teammate, tries to get it down the field. Hagel has continually improved, as have all the Colt quarterbacks. Under one of the best teachers there is, Zeke Bratkowski. Played for an awful lot of years behind Bart Starr. But this is a, an offense in its infancy. What they do best is run it. What they've got to do best to succeed is run it. Boy, they got a couple of hosses there that can they run do. it. Dickie and McKellen. Here we go. McMillan gets it on first down and takes it from the 39-yard line out close to the 45. Time a factor now, 140 and running in the second quarter. Colts into alignment without a huddle on second down and five. Bagel stands in, pump taken, gets it away, oh. and throws it back to the defensive back in position. Vince Albritton almost had a play to go the distance the other way. There was nobody there in a Colt uniform to catch the ball either. He threw that four yards behind Booz, I believe. Watch this. There, there's nobody even there. There's the closest receiver, and he's five yards away. Good second look at it. Our producer today for NBC Sports is George Finkel. Our director, Richard Klein, as we now have a minute and 29 seconds to play in the first half. Hagel directing the offense. Came in in the third quarter last week. Said he heard the cheers, but he's wondering if it's the same people who've been booing him that were cheering him. <laughs> Without both. Blitz. There's a throw and turn back with the ball and it's not quite there. Blues are running a deep pattern and stops the clock. The incomplete pass is 125 to play and the Cowboys will get it back. And one of the things that a receiver needs to do is recognize what's going on around him. In that particular instance, Bagel correctly read the blitz. Booza didn't see it and that ball was on the ground before Booza even turned around. Colts have been on the ropes in this game, but they're tough to KO. They're still very much in it, failing just 7 to nothing, even though the Cowboys have outdistanced them in total yardage 3-1. to one. There's Gary Allen back deep for Dallas, standing at his 10-yard line. Starks level to kick it through that hole in the roof. <laughs> Bills went down to the 15-yard line, and the special teams play is very aggressive and has been good for Indianapolis as the ball's down at the 25-yard line. They had a 40-yard punt as Stark tried to keep it from going in the end zone. We'll be back. One sixteen. that's all the ticks that are left. Second quarter, Cowboys with the ball, leading the Colts 7-0. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy. As the Dallas Cowboys with a 5-3 record, they were 4-3 and three until that ups that come from behind win last Sunday night, and it had been 10 years since Dallas had lost three of its first seven games. That's how good this team is. 18 straight years of winning seasons under Coach Landry. An NFL record. Danny White, who's been the incumbent the last four years at quarterback, gave way to Gary Hogeboom at the outset of the season. Danny White making his first start in an impressive one today. Another completion as he goes to Dorsett. Heading up field, and Dorsett gets out to the 36-yard line, but he's inbounds. The clock continues to run, an 11-yard gain. One minute to play. Tony arguing with the official that he did it back it out of bounds. Dallas with 50 seconds to play and the clock running goes into the shotgun. White fires and coming back to the ball. 
Mike Renfro. Football teams are impressive, and that young man is Dad Ray Renfro, a Pro Bowl player with the Cleveland Brown Championship teams of the 50s. 16 yards on the catch. One thing I liked about Danny White, he just kind of shrugged off that that uh, that pressure he got from the outside. Just nothing to it. Just stand there and throw it. Here's one for you. On first downs, Danny White is nine for nine, 132 yards, and a touchdown today. We'll accept that. He won't lose the job over that. I don't think so. Danny White had an interesting observation, though, Trump, about changing quarterbacks. He said, really, it's, it's a band-aid band -aid more than a cure-all. You really have to establish something with one guy and keep going with it. Well, Tom Landry, though, disagrees. I mean, throughout his coaching career here, I think the first argument or situation was, should it be Eddie LeBaron or Don Meredith? And then after that, should it be Don Meredith or Craig Morton? And then after that, should it be Craig Morton or Roger Staubach? And then after that, Staubach and White, now White and Hogaboom. It, it, it seems to be uh, the ongoing soap opera here in Dallas. I picked Staubach. Good for you. You're very smart. He wasn't bad. Cowboys have been to the Super Bowl more than any team in the National Football League. They've been there five times. They've won it twice. They haven't won it since they beat Denver after the 77 season. First and 10 now with 43 seconds left to play. Screen pass goes to Newsom. Look at Vernon Maxwell running down. Great play. The super fast outside linebacker for Indianapolis runs him down, and now the clock is stopped with 31 seconds to play. He not only made the tackle, but he also kept him in bounds, which in the last two minutes, and in this case, the last 35 seconds, is exactly what you want to do. This is well set up. This screen is. Look at Maxwell behind him. Boy, that's a great job. Keeping him in bounds. Makes Dallas use another timeout. I don't know about that, but that win last week might have been a start on it. Moving on to another Super Bowl. The light caused a bit of a problem here. You see the shadows that come in and out of sunlight because of the hole in the roof. There you see it. And you mentioned on a roll to Super Bowl. Now, there are a lot of teams in the NFL that are just happy to play in the NFL. This franchise, from top to bottom, is set up to win Super Bowls. One of the few there is in the NFL that wants to win Super Bowls. And how many teams could you find today, Don, that would be happy to be five and three? And Dallas is not happy. Neither are these people in the stands. They want uh, better than five and three, and they want to go to Palo Alto. Well, the franchise has had nothing but success under Coach Landry with his assistant head coach, Jim Myers. Landry, the only coach the Cowboys have ever had, and it didn't start out as a winning enterprise. Losing seasons the first five years. Sixth year, they broke 500, and then Shazam. Best in the business. Second down and four as Danny White. Looking long, firing. He's got Cosby as tight end. And he's down to the 22-yard line. So the Cowboys will have a good field goal position, but they've still got time with 19, so 24 seconds on the clock. 19-yard gain on the play. Colts came with five defensive backs. Kind of a prevent situation. Crosby just underneath the zone coverage and on top of the linebackers because you know they can run that screen pass out there so those linebackers got to respect that stay close to the line of scrimmage that creates the, the area out there for Cosby to work in so the Cowboys take a timeout Tom Landry came to the Dallas franchise after an assistant coaching career with the Giants where he's an all-pro player interesting story that Kyle Roach tells the former SMU grade he said our offensive coach with the Giants was Vince Lombardi our defensive coach was Landry he said he was going down the sideline, down the hall of the dormitory one night in summer training. Lombardi was in with some of his offensive players looking at film, went a little farther, and Landry was in with some of his defensive players going over a chalkboard. A few doors down was the head coach, Jim Lee Howell. He was reading the newspaper. <laughs> Knew he had it covered. <laughs> There's the coach of Danny White at Arizona State, Frank Cush. Got a winner written all over his record, 76% plus wins at Arizona State in 22 years. Went to Canada, had an 11 and 4 and 1 team there. First year at Hamilton. Down his third year with the Colts, and here's a throw to the end zone and a great play at the last moment by Preston Davis negated a Dallas touchdown. Renfro was waiting to take in six. 
good protection on the offensive line. You, you can see this is kind of a Chinese fire drill. All three wide receivers right there. This is just tipped away, deflected. <laughs> oh, Renfro. Oh, he's saying, oh, no, so close. Give me an opportunity here, and I'll make good on it. 19 seconds to play in the first half. Cowboys have one timeout remaining. Dallas leads the game 7-0. We'll be going to NFL 84 in New York at halftime. A nice weekend to play. The scores and the stories will be told. And now, Danny White going for the end zone again. Oh, that's close. Yes, sir. Doug Cosby, the tight end, was struck hard by Kofensis, and they're going to call him on it. What's the uh, record for flags thrown on uh, a penalty? I see five. That might be the all-timer right there. Well, this is the year for the all-timer to be set because they're up about 15, 13 or 15 percent out of the penalties. We had a game the last week. Nice interference, defense, number 29, spot on the foul, first down. Mark Kofensis, 29. Well, you know, you know what? That ball was tipped by Johnny Cooks, 98. And it, if that's a situation, then there is no such thing as pass interference. I think uh, the Colts should be upset with that. I think that ball was tipped. It certainly appeared to uh, change direction. Let's watch closely. 98 is Cooks. Well, I don't know. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah. The call made, though, was pass interference. That's the only one that counts. 13 seconds left to play in the first half. First and goal from the five-yard line. Boys leading 7-0, looking to extend it before halftime. Here's a throw into the end zone and a touchdown to Cosby. Well, the big tight end from Santa Clara. Comes down with the ball from five yards out, and the Cowboys go a long way in a short time to take a 13-0 lead. His third touchdown reception of the season. You'll see Cosby at the right. Now, he has contact here, but tight end's got to win that contact. At the line of scrimmage, he was held up, kept his balance, that's just extreme confidence. You, the thing that I like that Danny White did there, Cosby's like 6'6". He just threw it about seven feet tall, allowed him to go up and get it. If he throws it low, somebody's got a chance to tip it away. Nine seconds to play in the first half has set the end. Ogaboom holding will try the point after. Block. Vernon Maxwell, 56. They don't give up. You said they don't give up. Might not seem like a lot now with a 13-0 lead, but by the fourth quarter, it could mean a whole lot. But this Maxwell, block extra point. Inside the tight end, these Frank Bush teams do not give up, Don. Every play is like the last play of the Super Bowl. You go to the bank on that. They're tough and they're well-conditioned. When Bush says, I've got a very well-conditioned team, they got to be ready to run on the marathon because he is yeah. not easy in training camp interesting thing he told us last night the only coach I've ever heard in the NFL that he says I don't like meetings when we when we meet during the week we go out in the morning for about an hour and a half and in shorts and helmets or sweatsuits and helmets go through the plays we're going to run and we go back in they break for lunch and they come back out they put the pads on they do it again Danny White but he hasn't been that demonstrative today talk about Chris being a tough taskmaster. He's about the most approachable, helpful coach you'll ever meet. Couldn't me? agree with you more. Frank is not a politician. He's going to give you his side of any situation, whether you like it or not. <laughs> he also says one of the things he talked about, he doesn't like meetings. He also says you want to really get into something useless, get into pregame pep talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's won wherever he's been. 32 and 4 with Danny White as a quarterback at, at Arizona State. Except the ends, brings it downfield. The ball is fielded and fell out with eight seconds left, so the Colts will have time to flang it one more time. I wonder what Frank says at halftime. Is he rather quiet? Leave it in the hands of uh, Ken Venturi, the defensive coordinator, and Zeke Bradkowski, offensive coordinator. They really have not established anything offensively. They've not been able to run the ball at all this first half, but that's not going to discourage okay, them. Here, new quarterback, Herman's coming in, Mark Herman. Wondered, well, it may be for just one play, though. Talked about Ken Venturi, the defensive coordinator for Indianapolis. He was the head coach at Northwestern. Had a team that got beat 40 to nothing by, I think it was Michigan. Said afterwards, the only difference between me and General Custer is he didn't have to watch the game films. Now we have Herman ready to fire on the final play. Downfield it goes to Booza. 
and it's incomplete. And there's still two seconds, so they'll try it again. Be interesting now, Trump, to see if Herman comes in in the third quarter. Yeah. This is a young man that Indianapolis wants to succeed. He is from the Indianapolis area. Incidentally, when he was in high school, the team was undefeated in high school. Carmel, Indiana. Goes to Purdue, All-American at Purdue. Breaks his thumb, has had nothing but injury problems as a pro. Broke, I think he broke his collarbone last year. And if Herman has one problem, it's strength of arm. He was a four-year starter at Purdue, and when he left, he had set a number of NCAA passing records. Now on second down and 10, Herman takes a deep drop, lets her fly, and downfield it goes incomplete, and that will do it for the first two quarters of play. The Cowboys to the locker room with some winnings to count. They're up 13 to nothing over Indianapolis as Mark Herman drops off, and we could very well see him directing the Indianapolis offense in the second half. NFL 84 is coming up. Danny White with a big first half for the Cowboys with his first start of the season. 13 nothing. Dallas over Indianapolis. NFL 84 is next. First down has been a big down for Danny White and the Cowboys today. Those are his first down throwing numbers. Phenomenal. Rick, you can go through practice and not be oh, that lucky. Not playing catch. You're right. 13 of 14. Bagel, it looks like he's warming up on the sideline, although so is Arch Sleister. Number 10. Going to be interesting to see exactly who the uh, Colts start at quarterback this second half. There's Herman. Mark Herman came in to throw a couple of balls in the closing moments of the second quarter. Schleister with his war hat on, so we'll see who's going to come out. The Colts get the kickoff. Dallas has it teed up and ready to go. Dallas leading 13 to nothing as we start the third quarter. Septian's kick goes downfield. 2, 10, 20. On the fly, he's out to the 23-yard line. It's Herman. Mark Herman comes in. Mark Herman in his fourth year, originally a draft choice of the Denver Broncos in the fourth round. From Purdue University, 6'4", 206 pounds. The NCAA passing leader when he completed his four years as a starter at Purdue. Hagel unable to move the team with any consistency in the first half. Indianapolis defense played well, though. Twice they nailed Tony Dorsett and forced the ball away and recovered the fumbles, but unable to convert for any points. Colts had one long shot at points. That was a 51-yard field goal attempt, but the snap was mishandled. It was a bad snap, and they never got it away. Colts come out of running on first down and take the ball to the 28-yard line as Curtis Dickey goes straight ahead. Free safety Michael Downs of the Cowboys knocked him down. When you mentioned it, Michael Downs knocked him down. These two safeties for the Dallas Cowboys are excellent, excellent tacklers. Bates and Downs are both Looks like they, even though they, they're not the size, they hit like linebackers. Down from Bryce. They starting for Dexter Clinkstale, who's hurt it. Now it's second down and five for Indianapolis. Straight ahead, the ball goes to Randy McMillan. Another Randy got it, Randy White. The watch. Coaches say that if you're going to run at Randy White, you've got to run at him quickly. Now watch him stand that offensive guard up. I mean... That never got out of his tracks. Randy White's there to make the tackle. This is always a tough situation for an offensive lineman because Monday you got to look at those films. You think, oh, no. Well, the guys like to be someplace else. Yeah. Uh, look, a lot of people have been embarrassed by Randy White. Producer George Finkel just in contact with uh, Indianapolis bench and quarterback Mike Pagel injured his right thumb in the first half and he's doubtful for the rest of the game. Oh, wide open. Herman throwing long, going for the ball. Speedster when there's a penalty marker down against the Cowboys' Everson Wall. Absolutely wide open, about 10 yards down the line of, from the line of scrimmage. There was nobody anywhere close to him. Somebody missed coverage somewhere. It's Randy White once again. Short yardage. Mm. Still able to get his hands up there. This is a good call by the officials. There was contact. You can see 24 just, he, he follows the fake of the quarterback. And what's showing? Now, I must tell you, though, that the defensive back, Everson Wall, certainly made up the distance in a hurry, but nevertheless, there was contact. You talked Trump about Mark Herman not having a strong arm. I don't know how far he has to throw, but that was a good looking ball. Uh, it's really not the length of the throw, Don. First down and 
10, and the Colts power the ball down to the 37-yard line. Jeff Code and Hegman on the stop for the Cowboys. If I may, to try to explain that, the strength of arm of a quarterback, you don't have to anticipate as much as someone who doesn't have one of those rifles. Uh, someone like uh, Mark Herman, he, he, he really doesn't have that strong of arm. He has to anticipate where the break is and is the receiver going to be open and throw it before the receiver breaks. A guy like Hogaboom, he can wait for the break and just zip it in there, and it's easier for the receiver to catch. How about Elway? He can throw it. Now, second down and seven, a swing pass. Curtis Dickey, Cowboys him and in, and Curtis Dickey got on the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up 37. Anthony Dickerson, a very fast outside linebacker. 51 was on the play along with Ron Fellows. Cowboy defense playing much better and throwing a shutout. So over two quarters of this game with two tall Jones, John Dutton, Randy White, and Jim Jeffcoat across the front. All number one draft choice. Hegman and Dickerson are the outside linebackers. Now Don Smerick's in the defensive line. As the Cowboys go to a long yardage defense seven defensive backs in Lift all the way there's a throw and a completion though Booza has the ball and he's down to the 31 yard line he'll be close but not quite to a first down it appears now, this is a two down situation though you can see these safeties come and watch them 32 Thurman 26 downs Herman recognizes it able to get the ball out there this is a great tackle by Victor Scott. One on one out there, keeps him from getting that first down. Do you go for it? Absolutely, you go for it. Another tight end, Mark Bell, is coming in the game for the Colts. Fourth down and inches for Indianapolis. As you see, the ball positioned at the Dallas 31 yard line. Cowboys lead the game in the third quarter, 13 0. That's good run away from Randy White here. Cowboys in a goal line defense. Down linemen jamming the gap. For the first down, Frank Middleton, a first-year player from Florida A&M. Good offensive blocking gave him the gap. And they ran right at Randy White. Watch the center, Ray Donaldson. He takes the guy on the right. Oh, wait a minute. They sucker Randy White. Nobody even touches him. They pull the guard in front of him. Oh, very interesting call. That's nice. That's nice. They just influence Randy White. He thinks it's a, a sweep to the left. He over-penetrates. Bam, up through the middle, first down. Nice play. Now have their deepest penetration of the Dallas end early in the third quarter, trailing 13 to nothing. Mark Herman sprints out, has time, walks it, and Booza comes down with the football. Matt Booza turning out inside the 20-yard line on Ron Fellows. So the Colts move downfield, and Frank Cush has to like what he's seen with Herman running the offense. That takes practice. That ball was thrown before Booza ever turned around and looked. Takes an awful lot of time on some grass field around the Indianapolis area. Familiarity between quarterback and receiver. Herman rolled a little bit left, well thrown, right on the money, close enough for a measurement. Oh, I like that last third down, uh, fourth down play. That was interesting. About the best way to, to uh, handle Randy White is don't block him, just let him go. Luza, a third-year player from Cal at Berkeley, has caught four passes for 37 yards. That one was good for a first down for the Colts as Indianapolis now has the ball at the 18-yard line of Dallas. 10.47 to play, third quarter. Cowboys lead as they did at the half, 13-0. For the Colts, mounting their best challenge of this game. to knock him down. Again, Dickerson is a tough guy to outrun. And Eugene Lockhart, the middle linebacker, both on the stop. Lockhart has a, a broken right thumb. You saw that they, they had his thumb. See the right hand? Bruning has got a bad back. They put Lockhart in there. Was wondering, they were wondering if he was going to be able to play, but you have to have that cast checked by the officials before the game. Did you know that? So that it's padded enough that it can't really hurt somebody when he hits him with it? Him out with a club. They used to. That's been done. They used to. Ernie Scottner, the defensive coach of the Cowboys. He ranks the Bells. To the Hall of Fame. Here is a second and eight call as Herman throws and the ball is tipped away from Sherwin and another penalty call against the Cowboys on the free safety Michael Downs. Tough call. It was very close, yeah. but the Colts are beneficiaries and they'll have another first down. I thought that was very close. I thought uh, Downs 
defended the receiver very, very well. Jim Tunney now says. Pass interference, defense, 26, first down. Don, penalties have been the biggest part of this drive. Now watch once again. You'll see Downs at the bottom of the picture. Well, it's the right arm on the back of the receiver. That's it. That's the little trick that defensive backfield coaches teach their defensive backs. I don't think Downs protested very much. I think he knows he got caught. So it is first and in 10, Indianapolis. At the 12, straight up the middle, Randy McMillan out of the three-point in a sprint. Straight ahead, looking at the goal line, is knocked down by White, but he got yards. Randy McMillan, he's down to the eight-yard line. It'll be second down and six from there. You know, Don, even when you hit Randy White absolutely dead square, that time it was Ray Donaldson, the center, hit him absolutely dead square, <laughs> stood him up. He's still able to get there for the tackle. Well, he sets records as the strongest cowboy, has bench pressed over 500 pounds. Yeah, there are stories about him at the University of Maryland, too, that they still pass around at fraternity parties. And here's some of that. Late boy? On the way to the airport. Second down and five as they go to the run. There's fumble, the fumble. Dallas says they've got it, and the officials concur, and so the drive is stopped, and the Cowboys take over the ball. Once again, that pursuit. Anthony Dickerson was on the fumble by Curtis Dickey. There was just no place for Dickey to go. They simply don't create any spaces. Watch how many guys out here are there to make the tackle on Curtis Dickey. We'll count him when he gets out here to the corner. There's one. There's two. Bates on the outside. Ball loose. Downs kind of pulling away. Dallas ball. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Tricky back to live action at Texas Stadium. Cowboys coming up with a fumble recovery. Have the ball first and ten, and Dorsett breaks to open field and cuts back to the 15-yard line. You see that move? Vernon Maxwell had him dead to rights. I mean, in the crosshairs. Now watch this move. You see Maxwell untouched. Well, whoa! Goodness. Nobody coaches that. The only four-time All-American in college football. I didn't realize that. First-team All-American, four years at Pitt. No kidding. I know they got his locker. It's like a shrine in the Pitt Stadium over there. Second down and two coming up now for the Cowboys. Springs takes it ahead close to a first down they'll have to spot the ball and while they do we go to NFL 84 in New York thank you Bill the Bengals your old team Trump starting to get well everybody gets well against Houston unfortunately Don. now we have third down and about a yard for the Cowboys Ron Springs Counter play, if he got it, he just got it. Needed to get out to the 18-yard line. 7.25 to play. He got the first down, and so the Cowboys will go first and 10. 17 first down for the Pokes. I can think of three of those first downs for the Colts that were by penalty, too. Cowboys 17 first downs to seven for Indianapolis. So now the ball at the 18-yard line. The Cowboys go first and 10. Renfro wide left. Donnelly wide right. And they slotted Tony Hill at the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Seven first-half catches. Out they go to Cosby, who caught a touchdown ball also from Danny White. St. Louis now opens up a 24-14 lead over the Eagles at Philadelphia in the third quarter. One of the three co-leaders in the NFC East, the Cardinals, the Skins, and the Cowboys. Cowboys were hoping for some help from Philadelphia, too. Cowboys, three losses, all to division opponents. James Jones is now in the game for Dallas to run the ball. One of the two setbacks. Jones, who missed two years with a knee injury, is the up back in the eye set. The ball is slapped down by linebacker Johnny Cooks, number 98. Second player picked in the 82 draft. Moved him around a little, started him at inside linebacker last year. He was at right end at the outset of this season. Now he's moved to the left outside where he's played his best football. 
Linebackers of this Colt team are certainly something that they can build upon. They are very active and also excellent tacklers and the kind of players that Frank Bush likes. Johnny Cook, Cliff Odom, Barry Krause, and Vernon Maxwell across the four-man linebacking a set, a set alignment of the Indianapolis Colts. It's easy for me to say. <laughs> Four receivers now in the ball game for the Cowboys. Third and ten. And now we have Danny White firing that turnout pattern and Muslo catches the ball at the 30. Fine play by Timmy Newsom. 12 yards on the catch, single coverage on Newsom. One of the most difficult passes to catch. You'll see Newsom come out. He's got linebacker coverage on him. Now, this ball is thrown, and Newsom doesn't see it. He finally snaps his head around there. Boy, that's a difficult pass to catch. When it's just about to you, well, that's fine hand. First down. In his fifth year, Newsom is a big back with great hands. Drop. They say he's never fumbled. Never fumbled. Not very often. No, it's not very often at all. First down and 10. Dallas moving the ball now up to the 30. Cowboys leading the third quarter, 13 nothing as Dorsett runs ahead and gets to the 34-yard line. Vernon Maxwell, 56, was on the play. Also on the stop was the middle guard, Leo Wisniewski. One thing the Colts have been able to do, they haven't allowed Tony Dorsett to really bust one today. In fact, his longest run of the season so far, Don, is 31 yards. The Chiefs, an aggressive young defensive team. Right in front of Tampa Bay, 14-7 on a Kenny Malacy touchdown throw. Cleveland now goes ahead of New Orleans. Donald to Newsom, their second touchdown combination of the day for the Browns. Second down and seven. Danny White firing over the middle and oh, oh. And he gets up. Wow, what a hit. We'll listen to that hit by Nesby Glasgow. Watch. Receivers work. Fear. Boy, oh boy. I bet he got up. When you're stretched out over the middle like that, you, you can really suffer very serious injury. And for a tough kid. So is Glasgow, who delivered the hit. The hitter. But when the receiver's in the air, it's not really that big an impact to the defensive back, to the uh, receiver. And it's like it's being a beach ball. The third and seven coming up now. As White drops past time and fires again. And Donnelly is the ball free. Glasgow had a play on it that could not intercept, but the Cowboys will have to punt. At that time, the fences made the hit. One thing about the Colt defense, it's young, aggressive, and well-conditioned. It gets tougher as the game wears on. This will happen just about at the star. Watch this hit once again. Receiver up in the air. That's good coverage by the Colts. Donnelly, intended receiver. There's Glasgow. Nesby in his fifth year from the University of Washington. And he drops back now to return the punt. John Warren, the newly acquired punter for the Cowboys, standing back and hitting the ball at the 23-yard line. Good punt there to come back. If he can field it, he does. Whoa, free ball, and the Cowboys are going to get it. Donnie lost it in the sun. 46-yard punt, and into the sun it was. And the Cowboys come up with a ball at the 15-yard line of the Colts. He's mad at himself looking up at the sun. He made a good choice by letting it bounce. And then the bad choice is trying to catch it. It bounced right off the face man. Carl Howard right there to make sure that any contact he's going to have to pay. Now, he doesn't get that cushion once the ball hits the ground. The receiver, when the ball is in the air, you're, you're supposed to, the defender is supposed to stay away from the receiver. Once it hits the ground, that's gone. Turnovers evening up now. We remember the two first half fumbles by Dorsett that the Colts bounced on. Cowboys looking to deliver a knockout punch. If they can take it in here, they go up 20 to nothing if they hit the extra point. There's a rush by Blaze Winter, a screen pass, and it's dropped by Dorsett. Is that an option screen? Was he looking for that all the way? Uh, yes. He's trying to sell 
the defense that he's going downfield. If he can hold the linebackers in the middle of the field on, then that takes those guys out of coverage out there on Dorsett. So he keeps looking downfield and looks to the, uh, the screen man at the last split second. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KPRC-TV, Channel 2, Houston. We're at Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas, home of the Cowboys. They lead the game 13-0, third quarter, 5.49 to play in it. Down quickly with Bob Trumpy as the Cowboys after a fumble recovery on a missed punt. Has the ball, second and 10 from the 15 in Dorset. With that quick burst, takes it down inside the 10-yard line to the 9. That was a touchdown-saving tackle by Barry Krause, too. He just got a hold of his foot just after 33 makes it through the line of scrimmage. He did an excellent job. This team has played tough. Turnovers have hurt him. Third down and four now for the Cowboys. They've been productive, as you see, when they get it in down in the scoring zone, as they call it, inside the 20. White gets away from a pursuer. That was Johnny Cook on a blitz. Here's a throw to the end zone, and it's broken up and almost intercepted by Glasgow. Flag down. Looks like it's going to be a late hit on Danny White. Boy, that's... That was a very dangerous throw. That was a very dangerous throw by Danny, Danny White. Rolling to his right, throwing back to the other side of the end zone. He got Cosby all the way here. Obviously, this is a broken pattern. There's Glasgow in coverage. He looks open now, but White's got to throw that ball almost 35 yards. Cosby does the right thing. He makes sure that it's not intercepted. Well, it actually turned out to be a free play for Danny White because of the foul. Wisniewski going to the head. Excuse me, Don. And with the defensive foul, the ball's advanced down inside the Indianapolis five-yard line. And again, it's first down for the Cowboys and Danny White. Five minutes and a second to play in the third quarter. Cowboys looking to extend a 13-0 lead they've held since halftime. Ron Springs and Timmy Newsom, two big backs are in the game. Open set power formation. Newsom running and getting down to the two-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. This is the silver anniversary of the Cowboys. Their all-time team will be honored next Sunday when they play the Giants here at Texas Stadium. We'll see the inside down low look. See who leads that play. Ron Springs with the trapper up through the middle. It's little heavy in there. All those people, all those bodies, all that grunting and groaning. Wisniewski, a good middle guard, jamming up tight against the center for the Cowboys, Tom Rafferty. Second and goal, Dallas. End off and a Ooh. hard pop comes from the right side of the defense. Coming up to fill and make the hit, Vernon Maxwell, and also on the stop was Barry Krause was the first to get him. They shut him down today. Home run hitter. We gotta also give a little credit to Blaze Winter. I think he's in there. No, he's on his back. Excuse me. That's Vernon Maxwell. Barry with Krause. Newski. Barry Krause. That's a group. And they've so far held the Cowboys out of the end zone with third down and two coming out. Third down and goal from the two-yard line for the Cowboys. Von Springs goes in motion. White's turning out, looking at Cosby. Has a problem, the ball is slapped away. Cliff Odom, an inside linebacker from Texas at Arlington, knocked it down. He was looking tight end from the start, but there was no tight end open. Cosby was covered. Colts covered it very well. You can see Glasgow on the chuck. Coverage behind by Odom. Able to get his hand up there. Good coverage by Indianapolis. Stepped in on for the field goal. Rafael Septien having a big year. No. Has hit 15 of 17 field goal attempts. This will be like an extra point. 20 yarders straight away. No. 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 Blocked the one extra point. But he doesn't get this one, and Septien's right through the uprights. 
So the Cowboys get points off the Indianapolis turnover. The field goal gives the Cowboys a 16-0 lead. Uh, Raphael Septien, and they have opened up a 16-0 lead. Not coincidentally, Trump, it was a week ago that the Colts were down 16-0 to the Steelers. That went into the fourth quarter. And they erupted for those 17 unanswered points in a very dramatic victory. It'll be tough to do here at Texas Stadium, but you know that the Colts will keep on trying. Psychological uh, lift, I think, for Indianapolis. They held uh, Dallas to three points on just a 15-yard drive. Defenses. That's the ball. Skip in. It's going to be ruled a touchback. It got into the end zone, and so it comes out to the 21st and 10. And the Colts go on offense, and they'll have to be throwing now with 3:21 to play third quarter. Been an empty day for the Colts offense. You see the one interception and all the rest punts on the fumble the last time. Cowboys lead the National Conference in interceptions with 17. Lead the NFC in takeaways now at 24. Mark Herman throwing on first down, but he better hurry. He does, and it's intercepted by Hegman. Dallas gets it back again. Well, the Cowboy defense key in this football game at this point takes it over again. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim Jeffco had good pressure. This ball should not have been thrown. No way. Take the sack right here. But instead he throws it. Hegman right there. He's not even close to making a pass completion there, Don. Mike Hegman with a big play for the Dallas defense, intercepting a little thrown ball by Mark Herman. And the Cowboys leading 16-0 with 3-12 to play in the third quarter. Now challenging again on the turnover. Ball at the 23-yard line of Indianapolis. I really rile up the Cowboy fans as they're fired up and Dorsett running wide, dipping in, dipping out, and then going down inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Got close to five. Down at the outset of this game, we made reference to the comment made by Tom Landry that he thought that last week's comeback over the New Orleans Saints was the turnaround point. Well, defensively, the Cowboys have played extremely well. Offensively, even with the amount of yards amassed, the offense really hasn't clicked yet today. 9,000 career yards for touchdown Tony Dorsett. Eighth here out of Pittsburgh. Looking for that end zone again now. Back to Dorsett they go, and he's down close to the 10-yard line. Barry Cross finally got him down. But Dorsett gets another Dallas first down. Just one of those guys, Don, that you keep giving it to him, and eventually he's going to break one. 78 yards. He needed 70 coming into the ball game today. Now watch him dance through that line of scrimmage. Excellent job staying behind his blockers. And they really he really gives no defensive people a chance to tackle him. Get him with a good, solid hit. Isn't that also the case with Peyton, Jimmy Brown, great running backs like that, the juice? Can't get that hard hit on him. It's interesting. You were talking about about the influence blocks of some of these teams in Dallas. It's very strong to see Dorsett take off the same way he starts. When he gets the ball, he's going the other way. He looks to shift those linebackers starting one way, then dancing back the other. It's a delay. Try to get the uh, defense moving sideways and then allow Tony Dorsett to get up through there. Here's Cosby on Cofensis. Big man on little man. And well, let's shake hands and make up. Colts have been tough down close, though. Pittsburgh running away from Atlanta at Red River Stadium. Steelers now up 28 to 3. Green Bay having a tough year until today, and they're hooking into the lines pretty good, 35 to 9. Green Dickey's going for a lot of touchdowns, four already. And back to Dorsett, didn't get in, but he did get down close to the two-yard line. On a second down and eight carry. Cowboys conceivably could get another first down. Watch the room he's got here. Just straight ahead blocking the center Rafferty influenced the nose man. That's called a collapse. The center just steps out like a pass protection, draws the nose man with him. Takes a big gap in that defense for Dorsett to get through. That much quarter statistic also at Trump is when Dorsett goes over 100 yards at home, the Cowboys don't lose. Yeah. Amazingly, they've won virtually every game they've played here at Texas Stadium. I think they have won every game they've played here that he's gone over 100 yards rushing. He's closing in now. 
Third down, up the middle. Colt defense isn't giving much. Tough as they were a short time ago after the fumble recovery by Dallas and they forced the Cowboys to kick a field goal. Brings up fourth down. And the waivers want him to go for it. This is a big field goal, though. This gives him 19 to nothing lead. Colts need three touchdowns. But this is the second straight drive. Last drive they had it at the 16 resulted in three points. This time they get it at the 23 and results in three points. Those are missed opportunities. That's what's too wrong taking a profit, though. That's true. We won't have the field goal, though, as the third quarter comes to an end. They'll switch ends and then kick it. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is the Dallas Cowboys 16, the Colts nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Goose with the great taste that could only come from Skoll. And by GTE, advancing technology in telecommunications and electrical products. something to dance about today and now the folks looking to extend their lead to 19 to nothing Hogaboom holds Septien hits the field goal and again the Cowboys capitalize on an Indianapolis turnover and extend their lead to 19 to nothing we'll be back with the Dallas kickoff right after this Cowboys, as you see, with the best record in the National Conference against American Conference teams, winning 33 of 45 previous meetings and in command of this one, 19 to nothing, three seconds into the fourth quarter at Texas Stadium. Rafael Septiano just hit the field goal. We'll kick it off now for Dallas. Defenses and Smith are back deep for the Indianapolis Colts. A high kick. Carry short of the goal line, and here comes Kofensis from the four. Cowboys is kind of hitting and knock him down inside the 20-yard line, so Indianapolis again starts out deep in their own end. Steve Biasi, a rookie linebacker from Boston College, fourth-round draft choice of the Cowboys, was down to make the play on special teams. Mark Herman once again at quarterback for the Colts. As much as they may not want to, they've got to throw it on every down now. They need three touchdowns. Down 16, nothing. We could go to the Steelers. They found a way. Yeah, it's very much against the Colts in this one as they right now have the ball first and 10 at their 18-yard line. Herman's last throw is intercepted, remember, by Dallas. Here's a swing pass up to Randy McMillan. If ever a guy looked like a football player, there's one. Randy, when he comes out in the field, you know you've got trouble. Great blocker, great 5 receiver. 11, 230, and as fast as anybody out there. Story of the game, though, has been the attention paid to one Randy White. You can see the center, Ray Donaldson, and Ben Ut there. He's gotten a lot of attention from an awful lot of football teams in the NFL, and it's all warranted. Randy White, his name one day will be on the wall with players like Bob Lilly and Chuck Cowley. John Perkins and Staubach honor the retired numbers up on the wall here at Texas Stadium. And right now, a run by the Indianapolis Colts uh, by Randy McMillan is stuffed by two tall Jones. McMillan is getting up slow. Cowboys now come with that 40 defense, four defensive linemen, seven defensive backs, even though it's third down and about four. Well, the Colts haven't broken a long play yet today, have they? I think the longest play has been a penalty. Got a couple of those throws to Booza. It was the longest play game was, was a penalty. Pass interference call against Dallas. Now third down and four. Cowboys have the coach right where they like him. They come with the all-out rush and got all those people back. A throw downfield almost intercepted. Everson Walls had his hands on it. And the Colts have to punt it back. All day long, this team is able to get, has been able to get pressure on the quarterback. Here's Jeff Coat out of Arizona State. Steve Wright, former Dallas Cowboy. Couldn't keep him out of there. Watch this from the left-hand side of the screen. Game on the inside, straight rush on the outside. Ball tipped. And I think if it hadn't been tipped, Walls would have had it. So it does bring up fourth down, and the Cowboys will get it anyway on the punt now as Ron Stark is back. Not as deep as usual. Coming up the field down the run is Gary Allen. He's across the 45 and out to the 50-yard line. 
Cowboys get it back. 38-yard punt and a 12-yard return. And the Cowboys again start out in good position right at midfield. The best laid plans of the uh, Indianapolis Colts have come up way short so far today, Trump. Cowboys just too much offense and defense. You're right, but I mean, looking down the road for the Dallas Cowboys, they have missed some opportunities today. I tend to think that Tom Landry will, will be very happy with the performance of Danny White, uh, Randy White, uh, Danny White and his defense. Whatever. Yeah, one of those white guys. But he'll also be concerned about the lack of scoring when all they had all those great opportunities here in the second half. First and ten now for Danny White and the Cowboys. Let it go long. And he's there. Clean break up. Now a penalty marker comes from way off the play. Well, the call will go against the Colts, and the Cowboys will have it point blank range again. They had him covered inside and outside. Defenses 29, Tate Randall 35. You can see his arm right over Thrill Hill's arm. That's a good call. That's a good call. Well, let's see if they can get in the end zone this time now. Is correct. He uh, did. He was the one with the arm over the receiver. Excellent call. So Walter Payton Trump has gone over a thousand yards for the season. Just the ninth game. He had 57 yards today. And Ten carries. He's not done yet. He is having a heck of a year. Obviously, that every year that preventive maintenance he had on his knees. He called a twin orthoscopic surgery. Ten thousand mile checkup. Yes, must have worked. First and goal, Cowboys from the three. No the play. set is stuffed, and the penalty marker comes in also. Cliff Odom came in, stripped the blocking to make the knockdown for a loss. And you can still see that defense of the Colts celebrating. Score 19 to nothing, but against a very potent offense, and certainly an offense with uh, the, the, the kind of reputation this Cowboy team has. Holding Cowboys, Colts got to feel very good. Yeah, they've stopped them down close twice with just field goals. New England now making it close with the Jets. Jets leading 20 to 16. Craig James just ran 25 yards for a Patriot touchdown. That game still in the third quarter. Kansas City holding to a 14-13 lead over Tampa Bay. Ariri just kicked a field goal for the Buccaneers. Green Bay extends its lead to 38-9 to wow. over Detroit. 68, 10 yards from where the ball is put in play. Still first. I think Detroit misses uh, Billy Sims. I was going to make a comment on Tom Landry. I don't know of any other coach in the NFL who is in charge of the offense on the sideline and yet does not have a headset to the coaches up in the booth. Jim Shopner, the guy in the blue shirt there, just to Tom Landry's right, is the guy who wigwags the signals in, but Landry doesn't want to be bothered by talking to people upstairs. Said it affects his concentration. Coach Landry looks a little like Mr. District Attorney in that yes. hat. Yes. Same get up, same look. He doesn't change over the years. This is his silver anniversary as coach of the Cowboys. The only coach they've ever had, and now his team goes second and goal into the run. Newsom takes it. Not very far, but he did get inside the five-yard line to bring up third down. Well, the Colts continue. They are playing very, very tough down there. That's Cosby on Donnell Thompson, still able to stop him up. Cowboys have not found a seam in there yet today, Don. Colts loving the play defense. It's really two teams and two games in every... Uh, with every football team, the defense and the offense. The defense has acquitted itself admirably, although it's been given very poor field positions to defend against as the Colts have been backed up in their own end of this Dallas offense. And now Dorsett heads for the end zone and doesn't get there. That was on third down, so it again brings up fourth down. Here comes Jeff Gannigan. Here's Cosby on Donnell Thompson, fights it off. Great play by the weak safety. Defenses to come in there and cut the legs out from underneath Tony Dorsett. And the fans here in Texas Stadium don't like this. Uh, this is different down here. This is 
We want to go to the Super Bowl. We don't want to win 22 to nothing. We want to go to the Super Bowl. We don't like this. But I like it a lot less than Indianapolis right now. Yes, they fool you, right? But when you win as consistently as this franchise has, you spoil people, including yourself. You pointed out how many teams wouldn't love to be five and three. Here in Dallas, they wonder what's wrong. Last yeah. year, they were, what, seven and one at the turn, and Coach Landry said he hated meeting with the press because you'd think he was one and seven. Yeah, and of course, they lose their last three games of the season, two regular season games, and then the first playoff game. And, and you exceeding the 30 seconds, accepted. Fourth down. Anyway, losing those last three games, you'd have thought that they uh, had an under 500 record. Certain amount of overreaction by a lot of people. Took a delay of game. Makes it a 25-yard field goal. Actually, point blank either way. You're right. I don't think it makes any difference except you. Tip. But good. Again. 12 minutes and 9 seconds to play in the game, and the Cowboys now lead it 22 to nothing. The Cowboys got out the Colts as you see in 78, 38, nothing. Right now, 22, nothing. Dallas in the fourth quarter. Sepian is three for three on field goals. It's a long kickoff and very high. Bill Smith's going to bring it out. Turns the corner. Gets his chance, and he's done something with it as he takes it from three yards deep in the end zone out across the 30. Dennis Thurman finally ran him out of bounds. So the Colts go on offense again, first and 10. They really had problems scoring, though, before they got those 17 points in the fourth quarter against the Steelers. Colts had only one touchdown against the Eagles and then one touchdown against the Redskins and losing the two previous games. John, there's no question that things have to break right for the Colts to be in these games in the fourth quarter. They just don't have, they've yet to really develop the, the talent that you need in the NFL. I think everyone in Indianapolis is aware of that. They're building, they're building right up front. Mark Herman quarterback since late in the first half and Mike Pagel injured his thumb. There's a throw. Randy McMillan took a look at that guy coming off the stick and if he, he talked about reaching out for a ball. Yeah, it, it, you'd be surprised how uh, your ears get better. Only one player at today's game has ever been a number one pick in the NFL draft. He's starting today on defense. Who is it? I mean, the first pick overall in the draft. Ed, Ed Jones. Huh? Correct. Ed Tuto Jones. Randy White was the second pick after Steve Barkowski 10 years ago. John Dutton, when he was picked by the Colts, was very close. He was in the top three, I think, out of Nebraska. Number one's across the defensive front. The down line on the strength of the Cowboy defense. Right now they're pressuring Mark Herman as McMillan gets the ball. Uh oh, uh oh. There's one man to beat. Andy McMillan has finally run out of bounds by Michael Downs inside the 30-yard line of Dallas. A 45-yard run. No flags. And as we've documented all game long, this football team will not give up. They will keep plugging and plugging and plugging as best they possibly can. McMillan kind of short on the previous pass. Didn't catch it, but look at him now. Breaks a good tackle here. You see right there, he just jumps inside it. And now watch the acceleration. Boom, boom, boom. He's underway. Broke the tackle of Mean Eugene, the hidden machine. Well, look at Lockhart. Look at Jeff Coat run there. Show me some pretty good speed for a guy that's 270 pounds. Michael Downs had the angle on him, though, and the Colts have their best penetration of uh, Dallas in in an awfully long time as they're down at the 25 yard line. Now they're down at the 35 yard line. <laughs> Mike Hegman and Eugene Lockhart came on linebacker blitzes. He had no chance whatsoever. The minute he was set up, there was somebody there at it. Watch once again. You can see Hegman and Dickerson coming. Oh, excuse me, that's Hegman and Lockhart coming. They had no chance. Lockhart unblocked. The Colts' last big winners were, of course, the March of Broda teams of the 70s. The Colts won the AFC East in 75, 76, and 77, but they haven't been close to the playoffs since. You know, they've had some upheaval in this franchise over the last two or three years. This is 
now in the Indianapolis area in its infancy. The honeymoon is still going on in Indianapolis with this football team. There isn't in Baltimore, though, where Memorial Stadium is so quiet these Sunday autumn afternoons. Too much time for all those years and all those great teams. Right now, the Colts misfiring as they look like they had Delay, an opportunity. 30 seconds, five yards. Now you can see that the Cowboy defense is now dictating a lot of things to the Colt offense. They came with the 40 defense, four defensive linemen, seven defensive backs, both safeties up in the line of scrimmage, faking the blitz, and then step out. I'm sure Herman calls an audible, and all of a sudden it doesn't work. Go again. Second down. And about 25 to go for the first down. Quick timing pattern coming down the ball is Matt Booza. And he comes back down inside the 30 and goes out of bounds at the 28. Victor Scott, a first year linebacker, a first year defensive back from Colorado, got him. I was just going to mention that Frank Bush just put the headset on to someone up in the booth. I'm not sure exactly what he said, but. It was an emphatic statement, I'll tell you that. And then he took him back off. He's not too happy with what's going on here. Booz has caught five for 47. Third and 13 coming up for Indianapolis. 10.58 to play in the game. Big rush again against Herman. Got away, but not for long. Bill Bates got him, and he might have got him by the face mask. Yeah. That's not a blitz by Bates. He's playing middle linebacker. He's responsible for the running back that was lined up behind Herman. You see it right here. He just grabs a hold of the face mask, I believe. No foul. Fourth down. Flag will be picked up. Fourth down. No flag. Didn't it appear to you that he had a hold of the face mask? But no flag. What you saw there was... An illusion. An illusion. Did it with mirrors. There's the man, Ed Jones, who was the number one pick in 1974, coming out of Tennessee State. Was a pugilist for a while. Drummed around. You don't wear the helmet in that game. Yeah. He's a lot better defensive end. <laughs> the guys don't realize. Big strong guys in with a box. He's like 135 pounds. Lightweight. Put him in the hospital in about two minutes. The long field goal attempt is up, and the Colts are on the board. Raul Alegre drills a long one, and Indianapolis finally gets points. 52-yard field goal. We'll be back. Raul Alegre, who had a great season a year ago, hitting 30 of 35 for the Colts after coming to the Baltimore team at the time from Dallas. Probably a very important field goal. He had hoped to play for this football team, but Seth Dean beat him out. And a leg injury earlier this year. Now he's back and obviously in great form after a 52-yarder. Gary Allen flying up the middle, comes out to the 18-yard line for Dallas, and the Cowboys go back on offense first and 10. Next Sunday, more NFL football on NBC Sports. Our featured games include a showdown between two of the greatest running backs in the game, Walter Payton of the Bears and Marcus Allen of the Raiders. They'll meet up at Soldier Field in Chicago. Then in the second half of the doubleheader, Mark Gastineau gets a shot at the NFL's top-ranked quarterback, Dan Marino, as the Jets meet the Miami Dolphins. NFL 84 with host Bob Costas begins at 12.30 Eastern time. Check your local listings for the games in your area next Sunday. NBC Sports. Right now, Dallas goes first and 10 from the 17 yard line. Cowboys looking to work the clock with a 22 to 3 lead and 10 14 to play. New England has now gone in front of the Jets 23 to 20 in the fourth quarter. The Patriots were way down in that game. Chicago with a shutout going against Minnesota so far. Pittsburgh dominating Atlanta. 28 to 3 in the fourth quarter. St. Louis now extending its lead, and they were behind to the Eagles early. Kansas City holding to a one-point lead over Tampa Bay with a long time to go. Cincinnati routing winless Houston. Green Bay up on Detroit, 38 to 9. Right now we have second down and six coming up for Dallas. Danny White stands in, eludes the rush, throws it completion to Tony Hill. All day long. 
all day long. You're right. They've been very soft on coverage with Tony Hill. Of course, you must respect his speed. But that's the way they started this football game, throwing short little hitches, just little in-yard ins and outs to Tony Hill. People in Boston will be most interested in that five-yard pass from Tony Eason to Stefan Starring. With uh, 11 minutes to play in the game, and that brought the Patriots from behind to a 23-20 lead over the Jets. The Jets had led in that game 20-3. This, of course, the debut in New England as head coach of Raymond Berry, the great Cole Hall of Famer. First down and 10 now for Dallas to the run they go to Tony Dorsett. So quick, they say he times as faster, faster than he did as a rookie. He's getting very close to 100 yards, too. That's been a big barometer to the people here in Dallas, exactly how well this team is doing. I think he's uh, 22 carries now, 93 yards. And he's gone 11 games, this being the 12th without gaining 100 yards. And yet he's done his job. Tom Landry thinks that, uh, Land uh, that uh, Dorsett is having one of his better years. Second down and four. They could get him 100 yards. That would certainly eliminate one question from the press. That's right. He's keep counting the weeks. 11, 11 games dating back to last season. He's gone without rushing for 100. Second and five. They'll be running again. No, they're going to throw it. So what they do, and with the ball is Donnelly, and Doug Donnelly is out to the 49-yard line. So first down for the Cowboys as we go to NFL 84 in New York. All right, Don, New England has erased a 20-3 deficit and in the fourth quarter now lead the Jets 23-20. Here's the play they went ahead on. Tony Easton to Stefan Starring in the end zone. About eight minutes to play in the game. Pat Ryan, who had been shaken up earlier, has returned to try and rally the Jets. Thank you, Bob. A good one at Foxborough. The Dallas Cowboys from start to 7.30 mark of the fourth quarter. Cowboys moving the ball with a first down and leading the game 22 to 3. Here at Irving, Texas, Don Cookie with Bob Trumpy as Danny White. A lose to Big Bust. Here's the penalty marker down. Might get the Cowboys for a hold. As <laughs> Cooks is an hombre. What's the booing for? I think the way he put Donnelly about six inches deep into the turf. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> The object of the exercise, though, yes, isn't it? To yes, hit somebody. I think so. That was Renfro, Renfro with the catch. Yeah. The slug in the back. No flag. Going to be against Dallas. We know what the booing was for. Yes, now we understand. So Holding 75, 10 yards, still first down. So Johnny Cook slammed him. But Pazderic has called for the hold, so the Cowboys get 10 yards marked off against them. 7.16 to play. That guy can change your light bulb. 6'9", 275 pounds. Just reach up there and get him out. Do <laughs> it with his mouth. Pitch back. Door set. Across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Blaze Winter was on the tackle, the rookie from Syracuse, as the Cowboys get set to go into a divisional meeting. And as you pointed out, Trump, they've lost three divisional games so far this year, so they really have to keep winning. And Coach Landry, he can handle all that. Here's a guy that says the main objective of a coach is to convey leadership. People say he's unemotional on the sidelines. He said it doesn't do any good for a head coach to be stamping up and down and jumping on his hat. I was at their practice facility yesterday. They have tours through there. You said that. And yeah. Coach Landy was shaking hands with all the kids and the, the people were looking at the <laughs> shoes of Tony Dorsett. I mean, they didn't say a word for 20 minutes. Swing pass goes to Dorsett, but he can't find a hand. Well, look at those linebackers. You've got to look at Krause and Cooks. They have not given up. They're still plugging out there, even though the score is 22 to 3. This is when you judge the character of a football team. You got to like what you see from Indianapolis. The Colts next time out. There's Frank Cush. They'll be going against the San Diego Chargers at Indianapolis. Chicago now leading Minnesota 16 to 7 as they're in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati continues to lead the Oilers 31 to 13 in the fourth quarter. down and 18 now for Dallas as White sets up in the shotgun. Pass blocking is good for long enough to get it away to Renfro. There's a penalty marker down in the Colts secondary. 
they got Barry Krause. Holding on to Ron Spring. That's the call, an uh, interference call against the Colts. So that really is a big play to the Dallas offense. Not that they need one at this point, but yeah. on third and 18, they get a first down. Contact, number 35, five yards, first down. Now they're calling Tate Randall. I thought it was Barry Krause. He's wondering, who, me? You talking about me? Well, we'll see if we can catch the contact at the very top of the screen at the line of scrimmage. Now he's allowed five yards on that chuck. Last Colt win over the Cowboys on January 17, 1971. Super Bowl V. I when the next win will come, and it doesn't look like it'll be today for the Colts as they trail with 6.20 to play. So Seth turns the corner, and he's down to the 45-yard line. He's also over 100 yards. I don't know the answer to this question. I'm going to ask our uh, statistician, Dennis Manishin. It seems to me... That's now 104 yards for Dorsett, 24 carries. It seems to me that the Dallas Cowboys have run about three times as many offensive plays as the Indianapolis Colts. And you still don't see any fatigue on the field on the part of the Colts' defense. Are you happy now, everyone, that he got 100 yards? Can't hurt. Dorsett goes to the sideline. He did have some problems holding on, you'll recall, early in the game when he had those two first-half fumbles that stopped Dallas drives. Cowboys leading 22-3 with five and a half minutes to play in the game. Second and one. Other guys get a look now, and Timmy Newsom runs ahead for a Dallas first down. Vernon Maxwell got him. You got to admire a team. Well, it's not as bad as I thought. Dallas has run 65 plays. Was that the 66? Was that the 66? 66 plays to... Uh, Indianapolis is 47. Benjamin Disraeli said, there are two great untruths man must contend with. Damnable lies and statistics. Which are we, well, you look at the plays are even, so what? They're losing 22 to 3 to in the ball game. One thing you can certainly pick out when Benjamin Disraeli is quoted, you know there's a <laughs> lopsided score somewhere. <laughs> off goes and Newsom takes it inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Colts have a good looking defense. Their offense has two good runners but very little firepower. They don't have the big play in the offense. At least not today and not in the recent weeks. And they did last Sunday against Pittsburgh in the fourth quarter. The other three games in their last four times out. The offense hasn't done anything. Now they started this season with Cleveland now over New Orleans 14 to 13. Frank was telling us last evening that Frank Cush had started this season with three offensive linemen he thought were going to be big pluses for this team. Baldeschweiler, Wade Griffin, and of course Chris Hinton. All three hurt now. We're struggling on the offensive line. We ain't going to give up. They've lost a great player in Hinton for yeah. the season on a fractured leg. Running the ball, the Dallas Cowboys now bring it inside the 35-yard line of the Colts and down to the 34. Game clock runs with 3.35 to play. Dallas in command from the halftime. They were up 13-0 at halftime and gradually extended the lead to 22-0. Colts finally got on the board a short time ago on a 52-yard field goal by Raul Alegre. But much too little and much too late as the Colts defense has been out there a long time. I would certainly guess that uh, Danny White would continue to start a quarterback for the Cowboys, wouldn't you, Don? Oh, you played a great game. Captain start. This was his first start of the year. They made the switch to Hogaboom. It was a newspaper survey, a supposedly anonymous survey of the Cowboy players as to who they would like to have as their starter. Hogaboom showed up as number one. Whether or not that influenced the decision, but Hogan got a shot. He did not, he's not played very well in the first uh, seven games. You're right, but the point that Tom Landry has made to the press and to all those involved with the Dallas Cowboys is that his contention in is it has not been the quarterback's fault. Tony Hill was out. They've had a lot of problems on the offensive line. You know, a big tall guy in there, Harold Carmichael. He's older than a couple of officials out there, but nevertheless can still play. Anyway, Landry's point was, look, we're struggling in five and three. There's no doubt about that, but it hasn't been the quarterback's fault. Well, as you pointed out, Trump, when the quarterback 
is on a winning team. Often he gets too much credit. The converse is true. He's the focal point of everybody being angry. You're right. Danny White, including playoffs, has won more than 70% of the games he started coming into this season. You're right. Big Hill can still bring it down. Takes it down to the 25-yard line. Gets a big ovation. Harold Carmichael, he's caught a lot of balls yep. against the Cowboys with all those years with the Eagles. I remember Jaworski throwing that ball to Carmichael a lot to continue that consecutive game streak of catches. I think he still holds the record, doesn't he? That's his first reception as a Cowboy. Final score in the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Bob Trumpy's old team win their third game. 31-13 to in Houston falls to 0-9. Larry Kennebrew with four touchdowns in that ball game. So Houston will be in line for a very fine draft choice. They say there are four blue chippers this year. Potential all-pro players. Fralick, the offensive tackle from the Steelers. Childress, a defensive lineman from AM. Bruce Smith, defensive lineman from Virginia Tech, and the great Texas man, Gray. Now a fantastic finish. Back at Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas, down tricky with Bob Trumpy. Two minutes left to go in the game. The Cowboys dominating total yardage and the scoreboard. They lead the Indianapolis Colts 22 to 3. Dallas has the ball. Second down and three coming up at the 25 yard line of the Colts. The Cowboys have had the ball virtually the whole fourth quarter. Eight and a half minutes in this drive. Running it at their leisure. Pitch back. James Jones cutting back. James Jones, terrific young player with a very serious knee injury a couple of years ago. He has virtually missed the last two years of play. He hasn't played at all and has come back and is looking real good. He's one of the most popular Cowboys. There are a lot of teams that wouldn't stay with a running back for two years with a knee like that. After admiring, you see, he appears to be still a little tentative. This AstroTurf is, is a devil when it comes to bad knees and bad angles. It can tear you up. First down and 10 as Dallas had marches on with 120 to play in the game. Jones again and down to the 20. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC Football is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by Richard Klein. The technical director, Bruce Berquist, and we thank them all as the Cowboys come down the stretch of their sixth win of the season. 47 seconds to play in the game, and Dallas in the lead 22 to 3 here at Texas Stadium. Dorsett finally has broken that scheme of under 100 yard rushing games, gained 104 and 24 carries today. He's on the sideline. Cowboys go to backup troops as they run out the clock. Get set for the Giants next week, and the Colts go back to Indianapolis. Play the San Diego Chargers. 22 seconds as we tip down our thanks to NBC statistician Dennis Manishin also. And to our spotters Doug Adams and Cecil Taylor. And we'll do it as the final handshakes are performed and the numbers go in the book. The final score, the Cowboys beating the Colts 22-3 as Coach Landry, second winningest of all time behind Hallis, puts another one up. Notice Frank Cush looking for Bob Bruning, Arizona State product, and also looking for Danny White. And we'll be back to Texas Stadium right after this. score is in here at Irving, Texas. The Dallas Cowboys upping their record to six and three. The Colts fall to three and six as Dallas wins today going wire to wire. Never in doubt they beat the Colts 22 to three. A big second game on NBC Sports will be next Sunday on a doubleheader day when Walter Payton and the Chicago Bears host Marcus Allen and the L.A. Raiders. It'll be a day to remember and coming up today is NFL 84. As in New York, they're ready to review what happened on this ninth Sunday of play. Form chart holding up. The good team's starting to win pretty regularly now. 
I have a feeling that Dallas feels a little better about their football team. Their defense today was outstanding. Offense still struggled a little bit. Missed several scoring opportunities in the second half. It may have been because of the nature of the score in the first half, a little lack of emotion, but nevertheless, the defense today for the Dallas Cowboys was outstanding, and so was Danny White. Let's take a look at some of the play earlier. This was the second touchdown of the game coming in the second quarter. Danny White dropping on a first and five play from his own 12-yard line. He guns it into the end zone. A five-yard touchdown pass is the official book ruling. And Doug Cosby comes down with the ball. We got word in from New England that now the Patriots have scored 27 unanswered points and have come from a 20 to 3 deficit and they lead the Jets 30 to 20. Raymond Berry's first game as head coach in New England with 2.16 left to play in the game. So a dramatic turnabout there at Foxborough, but you'll be seeing about all the games very shortly as we go to NFL 84 in New York. The Dallas Cowboys winning here today 22 to 3. Back at quarterback was Danny White. He had a big day, so did his ace run.